and there is a quorum, Allegra, so I'm going to leave it to you and Deborah to go ahead and call the meeting. All right. Um, oh, we are all here. Wonderful. Um, it is 631, and I this is a meeting of the Community Safety and Social Justice Committee, and I am calling it to order um, with the extension of Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. This meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. Um, so I'm just going to go over our agenda quickly. Um, first, we will have announcements, then public comment, any member reports, Action and discussion items will include Crest DEI and youth empowerment updates, police chief and Crest director search updates, a review of the budget letter, which went out in the packet, um, a resident oversight board update, multilingual parents advisory council, and then a debrief from the forums, specific in specific things that were brought to attention were communications feedback, civil rights violation feedback, and community outreach efforts. Um, we will end with additional public comment and upcoming agenda items and meeting schedules and any other topics that the chair did not reasonably anticipate 48 hours in advance of the meeting, and then we will adjourn. Uh, so, does anybody have any announcements? Before you um, go to announcements, can you do the check-in for all of the members so they can be heard, please? Thank you for the reminder, Jennifer. Um, I'm just going in order. Lisette, can you hear us? Yes, I can. Thank you. We can hear you. Um, Deborah, can you hear us? Yes, I can. All right. We can hear you. Isabella, can you hear us? Can you just say something to if yeah you... yeah I can hear you all right thank you uh Freke, can you hear us yes I can all right we can hear you and Everald here thank mm -hmm. you okay everybody is here and can be heard does anybody have any announcements after that Um, one thing that I saw recently was a flyer from the Black Business Association of Amherst. They are having a um, Kwanzaa celebration on the 31st, I believe, which is Sunday. And that will take place at 1 p.m. at New Africa House on UMass campus. Um... Jennifer, is the town doing their celebration as well? We will be doing a celebration on the 26th. Okay. Perfect. Um, what else? Well, uh, Jennifer, can you provide more information about that? Like, so what, what are you all doing on the 26th? Just so everybody can know. Yeah, so typically we have a whole program that comes in where some of the youth come in and we speak about the history of Kwanzaa, the different um, items that are on the Kwanzaa table are explained. Then we do the seven symbols of Kwanzaa and the candles or the seven days of Kwanzaa. We will have dinner, which will be very nice. Um, and we will have two performances, one by uh, Lauren Mills and some other youth who I don't know who are quite yet and um hopefully the other one we'll have some drumming and drumming tutorial and possibly another one that hasn't been confirmed and, and this is taking place um at the banks community center okay great um any other announcements from anybody All right, not seeing any hands. Um, 
I will move to public comment. So during the public comment period, the chair will recognize members of the public when called on, please identify yourself by saying your name, pronouns, and residential address. Residents are welcome to express their view for up to three minutes at the discretion of the chair based upon the number of people who wish to speak. No speaker can cede their time to another speaker. CSSJC will not engage in a dialogue or comment on a matter raised during public comment. Um, I do see six members of the audience. If anybody would like to make public comment, please raise your hand to do so. one hand raised. All right. Thank you very much. Name's Amilkar Shabazz. I live in South Amherst. And um, <clears throat> first of all, thanks for the shout out about uh, upcoming uh, Kwanzaa events in the area. It's a great opportunity for uh, community building and especially in terms of um, the celebrating some of the positive uh, traditions of the African continent and African people worldwide. Um, I wanted to uh, just speak as we come to the end of the calendar year um, in reflection on how far we've come and how far we have yet to go and to really encourage um, you all in your work and to know that there is uh, considerable community support for um, getting the answers we need and getting the uh, movement in the direction of the kind of uh, safe community, safer community that we all want here. And so just wanted to, uh, to say that and, and uh, uh, express appreciation for all, for all your labors and um, to uh, to know that it is uh, uh, supported and um, and we wish you all the best and particularly helping with the selection of our next uh, chief of police. Thank you. Thank you. Um, again, for members who have just joined us of the public, we are at our first public comment period. If you would like to make public comment, you can raise your hand and you will be called on. All right, I am not seeing any more hands up. We will have an additional public comment period at the end of our meeting. Um, and next on the agenda is member reports. Does anything, any, oh, does anybody have anything to report? Yes, Deb. Yeah, so I have um, some things to report, which actually Allegra and I um, had several meetings um, throughout the month. Um, one was with uh, Michael Husson from the Pelham Public Sa Safety Working Group. Um, and there, and there was another member too, and I forget her name, and they were really pleasant and wonderful to talk with. And Pelham is um, looking at the possibility of, um, you know, creating their own kind of um, uh, community responder and or possibly, you know, partnering with us. Um, so it was a, just a good conversation. They were really picking our brains in terms of the work that um, we did, especially with the CSWG and now CSSJC. And I guess I had had some um, communications already with Earl Miller uh, prior um uh, to him leaving um so and and michael i know has been attending our meetings i don't see him on today but he's been pretty much you know at, at all the meetings that we've been having at the town forum so i think that will be um a good thing and, and and again showcasing um you know the leadership uh qualities that we demonstrated in terms of beginning um with crest and why crest is so important for us to continue right um because other um, communities, which is what CSWG wanted, are emulating um, and looking at the work that, that we're doing. Um, and hopefully it'll be duplicated throughout Massachusetts and hopefully throughout, you know, and, and beyond. Um, so 
it's it's really a good thing. The other one is um, we were contacted. Allegra and I were contacted um, by the uh, League of Women uh, Voters uh, Racial Equity Group, and they they invited us to do a Judy Brooks uh, presentation. And um, you know they haven't they haven't publicized it yet, right, Allegra? Um, I haven't seen it go out. I know that we approved the flyer or whatever, but I hadn't seen that it actually was distributed yet. Exactly. Or on the website, so. so just to give you all a heads up, it'll be um, January 18th, most likely at 7 p.m. So mark your calendars. Um, so Allegra and I will be presenting on, you know, the CSWG recommendations, talking about the status of CRESS um, and looking at things. So, um, you know, Hopefully, once the um, advertisement is out, we'll be sharing it with you all and with all our networks to make sure that it's it's shared far and wide, um, because we need to continue to let the the community know about the work that um, CSWG did and CSSJC is doing, and obviously the status of CRESS and what's going on with it, um, and to continue to monitor closely all of these issues. Um, so that was another one. And then I think there was one more, but I'm forgetting now. So if I remember it, I'll come back. Thank you. Dr. I don't know if you want to add anything, Allegra. Um, I just, I wanted to add that I was in touch with some local service providers who were unable to attend either of the community forums, but did want to offer some feedback. Um, and so I was able to speak with someone over at the Survival Center and someone over at Craig's Door is just about some of their experiences with Crest and some of the things that they would hope to see moving forward. And you know, I think there was an emphasis on keeping Cress a separate and distinct department and also um, looking at staffing levels because it did seem at some points that there there was some lag time in response when they were called directly. And I don't know if that's a matter of staffing or a matter of the time that they were taking on each call. So that that was one um, concern that had been brought to my attention. So, um, but that was good to have some additional feedback outside of the forums. Um, I'm trying to think. Well, um, I remembered what I had forgotten, which was, oh. um, and I'm sure Allegra, you did too, because I, I had seen that, that you had met with her. Um, and we'll talk more when we talk uh, in regards to the resident oversight board, but we did meet with Deborah Kolodny. Um, I know I met with her separately, and then I think Allegra met with her too. And she's the person that's um, doing the town forums for the resident oversight board. And so I was able to give her, give her feedback in regards to my concerns. And, and when we get to that, um, I'll again, reshare my concerns in terms of where things are at in terms of the resident oversight board. But I wanted to make sure to, that's another you know um, activity. And then um, Everald, I don't know if you're able to, but if you could kind of share again, the information around the housing um, issue that you're dealing with, that would be good. Hi. Um, so not this Thursday, um, but the week of the 21st, um, which is the following Thursday, um, the Zoning Board of Appeals will be hearing from the real estate developers for the affordable housing in North Amherst. And at this coming meeting, this is where they will discuss um, the deeds, um, how people qualify, what um, they need to do to get one of these houses. We, as I've said before, um, we've gone over design, um, what would be available in these houses. And I think um, from everything we've seen and from everything that's been presented, I think they're very, will be very nice to develop houses. And this is an opportunity for people who um, want to buy a house in Amherst, but cannot necessarily afford um, market value houses. So these prices will be capped. So again, if anyone's listening, if you know of anyone who you may know who is interested or somebody you may have helped or that may be trying to buy a house but cannot afford, um, as I said, open market prices, um, this program would benefit those people. Um, 
So please come to the December 21st meeting. You have the opportunity to make public comments, ask questions. Um, I believe you may, the developers sometimes respond to questions in real time, but there's also, um, if you're a first time home buyer, there will be training programs um, tailored to first time home buyers. So you can actually learn how you can um, become a first time home buyer. So I encourage anyone that is interested, or if you know anyone that may benefit from this program, just spread the word. Um, the 21st meeting is going to be um, where you can at, get a lot of answers to how do I qualify for one of these properties. And this is, again, just for clarification, this is home ownership, not rental. <laughs> Uh, Everald, where is the meeting taking place? It is on Zoom. Like everything else, um, it is, right now it is on Zoom. Um, they are posted on the town website. So I believe it is um, under the ZBA link. Um, so we can go to Amherst website and the link is publicly posted. And these meetings will continue, um, I believe, every week until the ZBA votes yes or no to approve these properties. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Effelt. Any other member reports? All right, then let's move along to the CRESS DEI and youth empowerment updates, starting with CRESS. Jennifer, Emily. you have the PowerPoint. And um, Allegra, I have a couple of questions before we begin. Yes. Which was, is it possible to, to move Rob up on the action items so that it's um, DEI, CRESS, youth, all of those together? Absolutely. I am hoping that I can, um, can depart. And then secondly, I'm just wondering whether the search updates are expected from DEI or from your members who are part of those committees. Um, I I was planning to talk a little bit about where we were in the process for Crest Director. I don't know if um, if Everold can share Police Chief or if if you and Jennifer are both on the committee or you know if you're on <laughs> separate committees or how. Yeah. I, I was I just wanted to clarify my expectation was that it would be your committee members reporting about and I just wanted to make that to make sure that that was clear that rather than I'm not on either committee so um, I'm just, you just able to give a brief update when we get to that action item on on the police chief search I can perfect all right Right. So, so just to clarify, though, Pamela, so you're saying that you don't have any information then in regards to the police chief search or the crest director search? I'm not involved in either of those searches. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Um, so um, here's the first slide. And um, so can you move to the second slide? Uh, chief Nelson and I, and I are here, and so he has... Um, let's see agenda, just the dispatch update that he'll be giving. I'm going to talk about the neighbor services provided, the uh, service provider contracts. Um, uh, Chief Nelson will talk about the Crest Responder Search update, and then I'll um, end with a discussion about um, the plans for the sunset of the interim leadership team. And just so the rest of the, um, commu the, the committee members know, um, you know, we, we did want obviously the full temporary um, leadership team here. So just so so that they know, just so you know, uh, Pamela, can you let them know that they weren't here because just so everyone kind of is on the same page? Sure. So um, uh, uh, Kat Newman, who is part of the leadership team, is traveling with a responder and is out of state. Um, and um, Sergeant Griffin has another assignment and is not available. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so I think we can go down to the next slide and that will, Chief, that you're up. Sure, no problem. Good evening. So we've, we've come up with uh, some call call types as you you can see. Uh, this is what we're going to start start out 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 with. Uh, you know, we're call they're called they're dis, dis, dispatch directed calls. So uh, we're start 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 starting out with with the with this group because those those seem seem to bring the least amount of threat, least amount 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 of dan danger to to the response to those responders. So uh, the call calls will be thorough, thorough, thoroughly tri tri triaged by our our did did dispatch center before they go to crash or the, or the police. So just and, and you can you can see see that for 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 yourselves. But the uh the, you know the, the main the main ones are the fir the first four, you know well well be being check I mean, a mental a mental health health check that some some someone who's who seems seems to be in some some type of type type of state. Uh, it's it's this thing with business aid aid agency. I think one of the one of the uh, exam examples of that would be. Uh, it's assisting with uh, with, with the, the live the library, uh, assisting assistance. And that's you know some some someone call you know calls calls for 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 assistance or calls for for some 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 someone that 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 type 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 of thing. They're fairly straight straightforward for, forward. Uh, and again, this is you know the uh, crawl walk run run. Uh, uh, for 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 format, we'll, we'll see how each how 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 this goes. We're gonna re, re review each, each 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 call, see how how see how how it went, how how it went went well, how it may may not 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 have gone gone well, and uh, and see how and 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 learn learn and learn and learn from 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 that as as we march down 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 this path. Uh, we're gonna go live uh, the 18th at uh, eight. 8 8 8, 8, 8, 8 a.m. So, uh, the last the last two were prim primarily uh, ad 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 admin uh, uh, tra tra tracking. You know, uh, when you're doing uh, it, as, as it says administrative task ta task, or if it's a, a fall fall follow up to a pre previous re re response. So, so again, this is uh, as as I said, crawl walk run. And and we'll 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 learn. This is uh, you know as as we've said in the past. This is all brand 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 new, and we're going to learn a lot as we go 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 down 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 the, this uh, path. So, can we ask questions? Sure. Okay. So yeah, I have questions in regards to it. So thank you, um, Chief Nelson, for for this update. Um, so I think we had talked about it a little bit, but I want to kind of get more uh, information in terms of, so why is it that we're only starting with these um, calls as opposed to just, you know, uh, other calls that, so I, I didn't see noise complaints on here um, unless they they are in here. Um, nope. Disorderly, nope. disorderly conduct type nope. things. Um, also, um, so if it's a well-being check, you know, alcohol, drugs, drug kind of, you know, calls and things like that, where would those land? Um, so well, okay, well, well, let, okay, well, let, me, let me answer. Let me answer the question. Okay, no, you know, as I said, right or right off, right off the bat, the these are calls that present the least amount of danger to to the response responder, and it, and it make makes sense as I said, call, walk, run. These, these, as I said, these these calls are, are are where we 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 found in in record in records that they you know uh, you don't have and you don't you don't you, you don't have have uh, you it's rare that you'll have 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 a violent episode or some something that end, ends up being dan, 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 dangerous to 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 respond to the responder because don't don't forget on the on these calls the response responder is going. With, there, there's no police, 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 police involved. They're going on their their own, mm -hmm. and first and foremost, we're looking out for the response, response responder say, safety. Noise, 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 noise com complaints, disorder, order, orderly. Those have a higher ten, 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 ten tendency to be to to have some some degree of dan danger, some degree of, vi of, of violence. So that so 
So, so those those are down, 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 down the road. If 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 in fact at some some point they are, they are going to respond respond to that. But I I don't believe 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 they 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 will. I I don't believe believe they they should because of the high, higher chance or propensity for there to be some 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 violence in 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 involved for the well being be, be being checked. That's you know, some something, you know, some some someone's concerned about you know, they, they haven't seen their their friend for a few few days or they're not an, answering the phone, those type types type types of things. Excuse me. Now why now why 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 there's a need for well well be, be be being checked, that will come come later later. Once 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 they get get there, knock knock, knock on a door, or look in a window, or something or something something like 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 that. It could be for any number of reasons, you know. And then based based on what what they find, they'll either you know conclude 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 the call, or uh, you know it's saying that okay the per, per, per person's fine, or just not not home, or they'll the last ask for assistance because. They can't really find the, the reason. Find uh, you know they can't really conclude clue that 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 call. So and it, you know you you mentioned, you mentioned drugs or alcohol. Well, that might might be the re reason, but they're not going to know until they get 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 there, do their due dil dil diligence, and and determine whether whether they they they, they can clo close that call on on their own or seek seek assistance, be, be it from 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 police or from a fire or both. Okay, but I have a I have a subsequent question, Avril, um, based on on Chief Nelson's um, response. So I mean, I I, I think I, what I want to do because not including noise complaints, not including disorderly conduct, is not what CSWG had in mind in terms of our recommendations. Um, mm -hmm. We had made our recommendations. Um, we had said that this patch based on whatever the fact pattern was, would then send it out to uh, uh, Cress and it would be anything nonviolent. So I, I, I don't know, you know, why you're saying, like for instance, right, what happened on July 5th with the young people was a noise complaint. So if, if, if Cress had been the one to respond to that, things would probably would have gone a lot differently for those young people who are now traumatized, who are now terror, you know, feeling terror, felt terrorized, and are still dealing with the trauma of of what happened with the police um, back in July fifth, twenty twenty two. So, I, I'm not in an agreement with the fact that the noise complaints is not uh, entered and it is not part of this. I'm not in agreement that the disorderly conduct is not part of this because I was, I am, and I was part of the uh, CSWG, and so I remember our conversations and our recommendations. And it's anything nonviolent. So um, I don't know, you know, unless you, you need to sh show me the data in terms of you said there was some data. I want to see the data that sh showcases that there's this propensity for violence and so on and so forth. Because if we bring up the example of July 5th with those young people, there was no propensity for violence there. So I don't know why. Wait, wait, let me finish. So let me finish. Okay, so I don't know finish. why. Let me finish. So I don't know why. There's this thing of why isn't it taken on a case by case basis, as opposed to just blanketly saying, no, no noise complaints, no, no this or that. So, uh, yes, please, please respond. Well, first off, you said you, those were recommendations, and that's and that's just 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 what what they are. The other piece is, you know, it's just. You have you have to draw the line some some somewhere. You have to make a choice as to what 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 we're going to do 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 here. And again, the these calls are the ones that tend to be less less violence have a less propensity for violence. And there you have you have you have you have to draw the line because you got to start start some some somewhere. And you talk talk about the July July fifth. Okay, fine. That that's one one is is incident. I can't speak 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 to how it may may have turned turned out did 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 differently because it didn't. It it what what happened ha happened. But we we have to we have to have to go go with what 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 the data data shows what the his 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 history shows what the experience that the, that the, that the police police have with these type 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 types of calls. Thus, we come up with this with this this list as as the first, 
entreaty and into and into a response responding you've got to start 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 some 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 somewhere and the best and since this is all brand 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 new there there is there is no guide really good guide guide book for for this you've got to you you start smart you start start small and then grow yeah, but the but the community has been waiting for a long time for this. So I I I don't see why it's you're saying take, that we have okay, to well, let me let me know, finish let me finish. Why are you saying that that uh, you start small? There isn't there isn't room for us to start small when it is uh, you know community members, especially BIPOC community mem members that are feeling the intimidation. Like I just said, what happened with the July fifth in incident was very traumatizing and terrorizing to those young people. And so it, it uh, for me, I don't see why it is that we're, we're starting small. We should be starting with what it is that we that that Crest can respond to. And I'm I was at a I was at a a function where it was professional people, but just because it was all professional people of color, because I'm a black woman, and I remember there was a noise complaint, and I remember the police showing up at this place where there was this noise complaint, and the police trying to escalate. So us as professional black people, we were just kind of like, you know what, we'll, we'll de-escalate it. But I remember those police officers that showed up and actually tried to intimidate us and terrorize us at a social function. And again, and I remember going to the door and saying, I'm an attorney, I'm a professional person. And they basically belittled us. No, I'm giving you an, another example as to why I, I feel very, very concerned that obviously certain things are being left out and saying that we need to start small and so on and so forth. Because I've I've been, so you can't say that someone else told me it wasn't no third person, it wasn't fourth person, it was I was at a function and this is what transpired because I was there, okay? And the police showed up and tried to, to intimidate, you know, other uh, people, black people, people of color who were there to intimidate us and then shut us down and told us that if we wouldn't shut it, shut it down, they were gonna arrest us when we were trying to deescalate the situation. So this is why I'm saying that this needs to be looked at and, I'm, and, and hopefully the community is taking no because this is not acceptable. That this is that that these are the only um, calls that are going to be taking place. That we made recommendations back in 2021. We're about to go into 2024, and you're saying starting small. So I just want to make make sure that you understand what I'm saying. All right, and, and where I have these examples, and where I've brought up these two really major examples, there's countless others that we brought up during the CSWG data that we gathered. Okay. So I'm concerned about this, but I'll I appreciate, appreciate. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll let you finish. Go ahead. No, I said I'll stop there, but I, I'm very concerned. I, pre I pre appreciate your concern, but the bottom bottom line 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 is, we've we've been charged charged to make make this work, and we are going to make 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 it this this work. We've got a lot a lot a lot a lot of experience experience here, a lot of re really smart smart folk folks that want this to 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 work. And in and in our professional uh, opinion, this is a way to make maybe to, to, to get to get to get to get to get the, this to uh, work. We're we're going to do, do, do disagree. Okay, that's 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 fine. Everybody has an an, an an opinion, but for us, this is the best best way to make to make 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 this work in the short term and the long long term. We're not just talking talking about today tomorrow. We're talking talking about next next week, next month, ne next year, the next five 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 years. We're trying to build. We we're not we're not trying. We're build build building this so that it's sustainable. And the way you do that, you you know, we did we did we did we didn't say, hey, we're we're gonna go go to go to the moon next 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 year. All right. When 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 that when that start started, you had to build. You had because they didn't know how to do it. This this is all brand 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 new. So it's 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 the same same type 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 of thing. And there are going to be change 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 changes in the course as we go go along as we learn learn more. So you've got to, you got to start small. Learn 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 from your successes. Learn from your fail failures, and then grow and and use that to grow and make this what. What 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 it should 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 be an aid an aid an agency that's going to take care of pe people. So, you know, so we're we're going to do dis dis disagree, but in 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 the end, we are going to do 
what's best for the uh, for, for the aid for, for this aid 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 agency, and what's best for for the community community. That's what but we're charged I, but with. But I was just telling you, you're saying it's best for the community, but I'm just telling you that it's not what's best for the community. What and I'm I said, saying, and we're going to dis disagree. We're going to disagree. Yeah, but what? Yeah, it's it's a disagreement though. That's what that will potentially cost more people being intimidated and more people being, you know, terrorized by the police. And so that's the part. And I'm the and I'm representing the community, which is specific to BIPOC community, which are the ones that end up feeling it on their skin. So that's what I'm saying. And this needs to be taken into consideration. And I'm hoping that the community is listening. That's so that they can bring it up and make sure that it's it because if if this continues and it, and I like I said I want to see the data you know you said that there's data so there should be numbers there should be this and that so the next step you will be, you'll have to talk you don't have to well a talk 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 to the police so they they have they have they have that 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 that, that data but the, but but again you know Rome wasn't built in a day all right so and this this is going to take take time. Any other other pro, pro pro program like 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 this did not did not happen over 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 overnight. I think the standard is two years or something 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 like like like, like that. If everything goes according according to plan, Every, everything has not gone gone according according to plan plan here. So we're doing you know uh, the work the work is is being being done. It's being done, 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 done well. We're going to end up in a good, 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 good place. And folks are not some some folks are not going to agree with 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 the pace. It's going to take as long as it takes. All right. It's not it's not that we we don't care or hear about what what what's go go going on. The work is going to get 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 done. It's going to get done well. It's going to get done correctly. And folks can agree or not or not not agree. It's, 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 that's one of the nice, nice things about living in, in this kind of, kind of country. You're allowed to, to, to disagree. Yeah. Well, okay. Avril, go, go ahead. Thanks, Deborah. So, Chief Nolan, I, I agree with you and I agree with Deborah all at the same time. Um, I, I, I think starting small is a good idea. Um, but I'm agreeing with Deborah when I say, a noise complaint is small. It is not a criminal matter under mass general laws. Um, disorderly conduct, while it is a criminal matter, it is not a jailable offense. It just carries a fine. So those are small things. And so the question is, if the goal here is to start small and trial and error, um, I w w understanding concern for you know, Cress's safety, um, but, and Deborah's correct. If you do have data to say um, Amherst PD has responded to um, X amount of noise complaints and those noise complaints turn violent and those people had to be arrested, that's good for us to know. Mm -hmm. But if that data is, does not exist, then you can appreciate why we think yeah. that um, Cress but responded. It, but at the, at the same, oh, sorry, go ahead. Well, Chris responding to noise complaints is a small matter. And then it's the same thing around disorderly conduct. Um, you know, disorderly conducts don't start that way. It becomes a matter where um, a noise complaints gets generated, the police gets there, and the and things escalate. And then because it escalates, it turns into a disorderly conduct, which the intent here is, you know, to de-escalate and keep people out of jail for things mm -hmm. that or frankly, um, should not be jailable or under the law, but because of the way a person responds or behaves, it mm -hmm. becomes a situation where the police feel that they have no choice but to arrest somebody. So again, while I do appreciate that, you know, we have to start small and see what happens, I genuinely think that a noise complaint and disorderly conduct responses are small things to start with. No, oh, and and. And okay, I, I get, 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 I get your point, but I did, did, did disagree. I mean, you can, you can all also hypothesize or postulate that, 
you know that uh, disorderly or noise noi- noise complaint may not get get out of hand because 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 the police do 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 show 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 up. You you can you can go 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 down that 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 route, and no no one get gets ar- ar- arrested because they're there because some some someone shows shows up that can ar- ar- arrest you. Who knows? I mean, no, and noise, 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 noise complaints in this in this town predominantly call, 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 college kids, and you could you could say, well, you know, are call college kids going to listen to an uh, unarmed civilian who tell, tell, tells them to be quiet? I don't know, but the thing is, bottom line. We made our best our our best decisions here on on what on how on how to how to start 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 to to to, to, to dispatching. The main the main thing is we're going to start start to to, to, to dispatch and we can quibble about well we we sh- we should add this this one or that 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 one. But the main thing is we're going to start 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 to to, to to dispatching. We're going to learn learn from that. And who and who 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 knows? It might it might turn out that you know we we find find that maybe we we can send 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 them to noise to noise noise and flights. Maybe maybe we can send 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 them to disorder or, or, or orderly. But we're going to have to learn about that first and see if and as and as and as I said, as we go down down the path, we're going to have 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 to see where we can grow 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 this. But you got to you got to you got to you got to build 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 your foundation of information first and see how how it goes. And it's not just about response responding. It's 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 about how our response responders respond, 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 operate make making sure that they're do, doing the right the right 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 things on the right right calls that's all part 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 of it as well it's it's uh you know it's um you know, review, 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 reviewing calls for, you know, for, you know, uh, to make, make sure, sure that, that, that they, that they, the out, the outcomes are what we, what, 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 what we hope them to be. So there's a lot of other stuff, stuff among, among, amongst this, uh, well, surround, surround, surrounding this besides just, you know, what we need, we need to, to expand, expand the calls right, right, right now. So this, this is what, this is what, 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 what we're going to go, go, go with. This this is what we're going to build our I guess you you would call call our base data 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 on, and this is what we're going to learn 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 from and grow grow and grow from, you know this is this is these calls are not the be all and end all, all right it's going to grow, all right but we have to start some somewhere and this is where we chose to start. I'd like to make two points and then ask a question. Um, I I do agree with you that um you know. Sometimes on a noise complaint, a person may not necessarily respond the same way to an unarmed civilian that they would to the police. But then that's where the benefit of saying, I'm here, so the police are not here. And if you guys yeah, not I, I, and, yep. and if you guys are not gonna listen to me, I mean that's the whole point of being connected to dispatch is that they can call the police if absolutely yep. necessary. Yep. So again, that's my first rebuttal to what you're saying. And my 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 question is, um, how does the the staff of Cress feel about um, were they consulted? Did they have the chance to give any feedback or input as to this is where we start? Was there? Yeah. Okay, can we yeah. talk about that? Yeah, you well, 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 we can. I think I think think you you can get get more you can get get a more in depth answer from Miss Young, but yeah, they 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 were involved involved with 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 this. I mean, yeah. Okay, we, can hear, we can hear from Ms. Young. Yeah. So um, the conversation around call ta- types actually began on the very first day of the interim leadership team. So that was one of the things that we talked about on day one, and they have continued throughout the last four months. Um, and actually, this list is expanded. Um, I believe that the original list that uh, that the former director presented to this group many months ago was um, was only three call types. But in conversation with the responders and with Mike Curtin from dispatch, we ended up with uh, six call types that we would be recording and re- responding to in the CAD system. 
Um, the responders um, were were involved in every decision around the types of call types, as well as the language describing the call type. All of that work was done collaboratively. But the heart of my question is, and and I, I preface that by saying, this group has been saying for months now that the big concern here is that Crest is going to morph into something that it was not meant to be. Mm -hmm. and just by looking at this, it seems it's primarily focused on mental health and nothing to do with um, alternative means to law enforcement. Okay. And, sure. and so my, my direct question is, you know, starting with these call types, was there any feedback from the crest responders to say, I am comfortable or I'm not comfortable doing those, you know, nonviolent calls that would typically involve the police? So I, I um, so maybe I misunderstood your question, but I thought your question was, were the crest responders involved in the question. selection, the selection of these call types? And the answer no. is unequivocally, yes, they have been, we have been engaged in call types discussion with the responders from day one of the interim leadership team. We've had several uh, meetings and when I mean when I say we, I mean the leadership team and all of the press responders about the call types. Um, and so this is a list that was generated by the entire press department with so, uh, input um, from um, dispatch. The plan, I, can I, I just let me conclude okay. my Sorry. thought. So yeah. the, the plan has been from day one that there would be a rollout of call types. And um, some of the data that Chief Nelson is referring to and we shared at the last meeting is that the Harvard Government Performance Lab ha has data that suggests that it is an 18 months to two and a half year period for most departments to go from creation to actually receiving calls on dispatch. So by doing this at month 18, we are really on track nationally where we should be. The plan has always been that you would start with a small group and then you will add to it as both the dispatchers and the crest responders become more familiar with the procedure and um, and understand the practices that they're going to do. There's, this is not the, these are not the only call types that uh, the responders will respond to. It's just the initial grouping. And I do believe um, that, you know, whomever is the next director uh, will have an opportunity to continue to expand these call types um, and will address the types of call types that uh, are suggested in the prior uh, CSWG report. But this is just the initial start for that. So apologies if my question wasn't clear. It, it's not necessarily around the call types. I, I have no issues with the call types. It's actual calls that they're taking is the question. Is mm -hmm. was was there any feedback from um Cress individuals to say these are the calls we're comfortable going out on? Not necessarily the call types, but the actual calls themselves from this. Okay, so I I don't understand the distinction between the actual calls that they're going on and the call types because in my mind they are the same. So, um, but the answer I would say is yes. Like there has been this, the process has been um, as has been fully collaborative as far as the leadership team um, working with the responders to talk about the type of work that will be done and their ability to do it and do it well and safely. So the first group of responders, so of the five that are that are here, uh, four of them went through extensive training at the very beginning. And the fifth responder has actually been going through crisis intervention training, a 40 day program um, starting last week and, and ending, I believe, I think actually she ended to, she will end today and return back to the office tomorrow. So there's been a lot of thought and preparation into preparing them for for this for this point. And I um I so I and I uh, I I do want to say that I think that um while it is 
you know, there will be continued discussion about the types of call types and the order of the call types. The fact that this interim leadership team working collaboratively with dispatch and with the responders to be able to have this group go live on Monday at 8 a.m. is a huge achievement. And I don't, I, I mean, it's, you know, while there will be continued debate about the order of the call types to actually get to the point where 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 calls are going to be dispatched to the responders is a milestone and um and sh and we really should you know should have some celebration about that because it's been as you all know it has been a long time coming and so we're doing our very best to stand up this organization in a way, as Chief Nelson has said, that will make it successful long-term. This is just the beginning. It is not the only call types that they will have. It's not the only calls that they will respond to. Um, all of the data from the Harvard Government Performance Lab says that 18 months is really what the national trend is. And, and um, I think that both dispatch and the responders are prepared to go forward with this list and they will continue to add um, as time, you know, goes on. One, one last question while I, before I have other people um, chime in. So this is not the question. So they're going to go live on this Monday, 12, 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. And my question is, um, when there's a new director in place, um, do they have the authority to say, um, okay, we've done these many call types for these many months, here is an up and they've been successful or however they want to measure that. Now I think we can take these additional calls. Is there a mechanism in place where there will not be pushback from the police department? So you're you're asking two questions that I as an individual can't answer, but I'll give you my best guess. So I can't anticipate what the police are gonna do or not gonna do. Right. But I will say that we have worked collaboratively with police and dispatch to start this rollout. And there is an expectation in it and um, an agreement that as this rollout happens, more call types will be um, will be added. That's always been the plan. I think that that was the plan when the prior director was in place, that, that there would be a rollout and things would be added. Um, and I will also say, I'm sort of jumping the gun, the last bullet point I have is about the sunset of the interim leadership team. And um, the leadership team has committed to staying until um, a director is appointed. And we have all committed to being a part of the onboarding process. Like, you know, we're professionals. We wanna give whomever is selected the best opportunity to be successful in this position. And we know that that doesn't mean that we will, you know, end on a specific day and walk away. It means that we're going to try to assist the, the individual who's selected and um, be a part of the onboarding team and support that person's like the goal for, for, the, for the interim leadership team is to do a final report with a number of recommendations. Like it will be the, the director's responsibility and job as well as the town managers to decide which of the recommendations that, that they that you know that they follow or to make their own. But we're we are uh it is our job um to equip them to be successful, whomever that person is. And, and I'll let me let me add add into your core 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 question. The director is the head of the department department, and one 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 of their responsibilities is going to be look look looking at where and when to 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 expand the call the call call types. But if you're going to do that correctly, if you're going to do it safe, 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 safely, you got to do 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 it in cloud collaboration with the other the other two arms of public safety, safe, 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 safety, the police and fire e the EMS. You're going to consult 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 with, with them and say, hey, we're going to do we we want to expand into this realm. Say, well, find. find 
the, the smart thing to do is to find find out is or what 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 what, are, what have been your experience, experience experiences when 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 you've had had these type type types of calls, and then you talk and 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 you figure figure out what is the best way to 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 approach, approach it. You just don't go willy nilly nilly nil, nil, nil in, in 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 into something something like 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 this push pushback. I don't see that 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 there's going to be in, in, in anything that you would call push, pushback. We, you know, this is, we're 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 a team team here. I'm talking the three three the three three legs of public safe, safe, safety here. We're gonna we we are we are we are we are a team. We're a grow, grow grow growing team. So you depend on your team to help you out in spots where you might not be that familiar. But in 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 the end, the director the director the head of that the, the head of the crest crest department department is going is going is going to make 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 the decision on yes. We're going to go here, or we're going to go there. We're going to expand into the, the, this realm. That is their 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 charge. And if there's and the smart the smart the smart director will find out as much as much as they they uh, can and get as much back background as they can before 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 they make make a change, especially in a brand new department. Thank you, Chief Nelson. Thank you, Chief Nelson. for for your questions. Um, I mean, I, I just have some thoughts before going to Lisette, um, in terms of everything that that Chief Nelson and Pamela Young um said, um, because you all said quite a bit. And and Pamela, I, I do congratulate you all for starting this patch, um, because obviously it was supposed to be started um back in August, and then you know, then we, we all know what happened there in terms of role being put on administrative leave and then subsequently resigning. So yes, this is this is definitely huge um, in terms of, of this patch. However, we 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 from everything that's happened in terms of CSWG having made those recommendations and the fact that the town said our charge was create a pro program that is an alternative to to policing, right? Al alternative public safety department. And so what's happened is that this department has been in place for over a year, soon as it'll be, you know, in, in March will be two years, and basically have not been able to do their full scope of what they were supposed to do in terms of being an alternative to policing. So yes, we do have to question why that that the the um you know some of, of what was included in terms of, of non-jailable, non-violent um uh, calls are included in this list because it's been a long time. And when I've heard of feedback in terms of concerns of, of CRES, it's that CRES is basically a social service agency or a taxi driving agency, transportation agency, and hasn't been able to do what it was uh, established to do, which is to be an alternative to policing, a public safety department. And so if, if you continue to not allow them to do their job, then what are they doing, right? And that's where we, we, we have the questions. And that's where we see the resistance. Even though, yes, now you've allowed some more of the calls to happen. But as Everald and I have pointed out, most of those calls are dealing with mental health and or social service calls. And so we're not seeing the public safety part of it, Okay. And so that's where we that's where I, I want to see the data to see why it is that the public safety part of it hasn't been included in this list and why it is that then it's saying that, you know, we're starting small and so on and so forth. No, the, the starting small would be still including some of those calls. Yes, you can start small in terms of the number of calls, so on and so forth, but you still include those matters within your list. And that's why I am questioning why those were not included in the list. And so, so even though, you know, this has, you know, a, a baby step has been taken and I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that, we're noting the resistance, right, towards Crest being established as an alternative to policing and a public safety uh, uh, department that is independent, independent from the police and from the, the fire department. Yes, you all are going to work collaboratively, but it's supposed to be independent. 
And right now, the fact that you're saying that now this 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 um interim group is going to continue on and actually onboard the um the new director doesn't give me any any type of peace. Actually, <laughs> it really makes me feel like it's going to continue to be skewed in a way. Okay, because I feel like the mission of what Crest is supposed to do is is not being focused on. It's being taken towards a different direction, which is more social service uh, uh, department as opposed to an alternative to policing. So that doesn't give me any type of peace to say that you all are going to be training the new director because then the new director is going to feel that this is the, the, the path that the community wants Crest to go. And that is not the path, okay, that, that we want Crest to go. We want Crest to be an alternative to policing. Crest, the Crest members were trained, and as you stated, right, Earl, Earl talked about it. They got a gazillion hours of training on de-escalation, on how to do this work in a safe way. We did, a, a NCSWG, we did a lot of studies in Denver and all those, those other programs where it stated very little in terms of re, uh, respondents being harmed when they go out to respond to these calls, right? Because why? Because they've been trained, they've been, they, they, they're they prepared to go and do the de-escalation. So just because they, they're not armed does not mean that they're not safe, okay? So, and I, I understand, uh, Chief Nelson, you said that a lot of smart people are doing this work. I, I, I consider myself smart too. I consider the other, other people that did the work on CSWG and the countless hours of research, I consider, I consider them smart too. And the folks on CSWG, I consider them smart also. So, so I think you wanna take into consideration what we're saying and the points that we're making and the gaps that we're seeing and the gaps that are, are not being answered in terms of why isn't Crest being responsive as an alternative to policing and as a, uh, a group that's supposed to be responding to public uh, public safety department. Well, look, well, be, be, being checked is public safe, 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 safe safety. Address, address, addressing a mental health, 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 health concern is part of public safe, safe safety. Assisting a biz, biz, business uh, with some, with some, with a, with a request for service is part of public safety. Assisting a citizen is part of public safety. Bottom line, you got to start some, some, somewhere, and this is where we're going to start. And that, and this is how, and this is how it's going to go, and it's going to be success, successful because it ha, it ha, it ha, it has to be, and we've and we've and we've got folks that are committed to, committed to make sure that this is success, successful. So, you know, I've been doing do, do, doing this 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 work work for a, a little while in two in two di di different community, communities, two completely different communities. I think I, I think I think I'm pretty well versed in what. What, what, how to address public, public, public safety, safety? So, this is, this is, this, this is going to work, because we know, we know, it, we, we, we just know, know, know what it is. We have, we have, we have the right, right folks in the right, right place with the right train, train, tra training, and with the right, the correct mind, 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 mindset. So, this, this is, this is, this is what we're gonna go, go, go with, and it's gonna grow, but it, you gotta start somewhere, and this is where we're gonna start. Can we hear from Lisette? Hi. Um, so, um, Chief, thank you for being here. Um, I pretty much just echoing what other members have been saying this evening. Um, as far as my understanding is that we have this crest, um, uh, you know, mental health responders, and we also have the crisis inter um, intervention team with the police department. And then in addition to that, there's this CSO, which I believe was brought to our attention about a month or two months ago, which at least I had no idea that there was a CSO position even since 2019. So I guess what are the differences with what the crisis intervention team would be like the type of calls that they would be taking as opposed to the actual crest responder 
I'm 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 not sure that like any of the and 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 that so that'd be some some something for the car crisis intervention team to speak 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 to and APD to speak speak to in turn turn to their C C C C S O and what the mission of their C C C C S O is unless Pam Pam can add some something to to that. Right. So I, I think I just need to clarify the point that I made um, earlier. So the, the police department does have a CSO. They are separate and distinct from the CRESS um, department. So we're not involved with, with that operation um, at all. The CIT that I referred to was a type of training that one of our responders, well, I think at this point, all but two responders have gone through. So it's crisis intervention training, which prepares responders to res to um, to assist where there might be issues around mental health or behavioral health, as well as a range of other types of, um, of, of types of calls where there would be some sort of crisis that they would need to respond to. So that's what CIT, that's what I'm referring to, not a CIT team that exists in um, the town or in uh, the Crest Department, there there isn't one. Okay. Does that clarify? It clarifies it for me, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and I guess a follow-up, um, actually two things. One, um, and I don't know if you have an actual answer for this one, is how long will data be collected until this dispatch update is revised? Who knows? I mean, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot of that we are going to leave, leave to the new, the new director. You know, they're they're going to come up, come up with what they what they believe is a good, good time timeline in term, term, terms of reviewing calls and that and that type 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 of thing. That's something. Those are those are the types of things that we want to kind of stay stay away away from right now because we don't want to hamstring. The new, the new director, the new director is going to be ma ma making those decisions, and we're ta talking about bring, bring bringing on a new dire director in about a month or so. Well, you know, we're, we're only going to have a month, a month worth of that data, and who and who knows what is going to be a good time time frame to look 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 at this, but. We're gonna, we're gonna, you know, and that's that. That's some, 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 something that should be left to the new, the new director, you know. And and I'm gonna respond to some something about uh, we're not, we're not gonna train the new director. I mean, that, that's that's not what what we're hire, hire, hiring for. We're we're going to onboard, which means we're gonna give 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 them bad 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 background give give them uh found foundation and information that they need to go from not working here to working here and help and help and help and help them along we are not going to train the new the new the new the director we we hope that they they can in some way shape or form hit the hit the ground running with an assist from the legal leadership team because we've been been here since uh september december and most and uh, most most of us have 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 been we're working in 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 town for a while. So that's some you know uh, there's a, di a difference between tra training and on and on and on and on and on and onboarding because what this is is a tran is going to be a tran tran transition, you know. So okay, um, and then also in regards to the third bullet down on Z fifty eight. Um, I guess I just need a little bit of a clarification as to what types of response to request for assistance from a business or nonprofit agency or town department. Well, I use the uh, the uh, example of the live the live the live the library. You know, if they've got some some someone that's just that's just just kind of hanging 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 around or doing or just or whatever. They're going to go up there and then and have 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 a con, con, con conversation with 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 that per, per per person that that type that type of thing, you know. It's a if it's a big, big business. Excuse me, geez, uh, business not profit agency. Just some some you know an entity that's have have having an issue, and they'll and and they'll they'll go and address that 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 issue. You know, in the best way that 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 they can, if if they can, that is that that type that type type of thing. Okay, Pamela, did you have a response to Lisette's questions? 
So I um I think that Chief Nelson uh, gave a gr great response. I I want to point out that there are some um, technical reasons for why the call types are listed that they are. The Crest Department, well, the Dispatch Depart um, Division is in the process of obtaining a new CAD system. The new CAD system, which would record all of their calls, um, would allow for um, a responder department. The, the current CAD system doesn't uh, have the capability or the it, there is no distinction between like, um, between other departments, it's simply police or fire. So one of the ways in which we talked with dispatch about the way to capture the work that the department is doing is to create some of these call types that are administrative. Um, and so, and, and um, in addition, like the assist Bist business assist agency, uh, the responders um, routinely have a presence over at the John Jones Library. If if they were going to the Jones Library um, and they have what I would call a satellite office there, um, they would call in to a dispatch to say, you know, responder blah, 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 and responder blah, blah, blah are headed to dispatch. Dispatch will know that those two um, responders are at the library, that call is listed as an assist agency or assist business. And at the time that they make the call, they also um, inform dispatch that they can receive other types of calls from that location. So there's there are several sort of moving pieces about uh, recording, um, having dispatch know where responders are, having dispatch be able to send them from a particular location to assist with the call or respond to a call. So, you know, there, there's been some thought into that. And the process is going to be ongoing because there is hope um, and an expectation that there will be an, a new CAD system that will include the capability for um, distinguishing uh, responder um, from like police or from fire, but it doesn't exist now. And one of the slides that's coming up, we're gonna be talking about data. You would ask for a lot of uh, specific data and we have purposely not provided numbers. And there's a reason for that. And that is because we are in between several different systems and don't currently have what I would describe as accurate or fully complete data because the systems were modified, um, the slide will show, but I believe like in October and then again in November, and we are in the process of um, obtaining a software system that was recommended to the department by the Donahue Institute for capturing data. And it's hopeful that that purchase will happen before you know, if not before the end of the year, before the end of December, certainly in, in early January. So, you know, we're in, be we're in between um, different systems for, for capturing information. Thank you, Everald. I see your hand up and then maybe we can move on to the next slide. Thank you, Allegra. So I, I think Lizette did ask my question because I, I thought Z54 and Z58 were a little bit vague as if everything could roll up into that. But from from that explanation about, you know, people being at the Jones Library or at a nonprofit, um, are we saying that they're there like uninvited, overextended their stay? Um, and if And if that is the case, why isn't it just labeled as a trespasser, like responding to trespassing calls? So, uh, um, so again, um, I, I think that the explanation is that the call types are designed to match with the current CAD system. Um, and, you know, so I can give you examples from both the library and um, from uh, an agency. So, uh, I think it's now been like three or four weeks ago, we got a, a call from a nonprofit in town that um, 
wanted two responders to respond to a situation which, you know, we could call it any number of things, someone disruptive, disorderly conduct, what, whatever. And then as, and the responders um, were dispatched from the Crest Department to that call, in route to the call, the, um, with the same agency called back in and stated that they had a change of heart and they were calling uh, the police because in their mind, the situation had escalated. Um, another type of assist business uh, uh, agency, we have had occasions when the senior center has asked uh, across responders to assist them in, um, with someone in their space who's you know, perhaps being disruptive in some way. Um, or um, as I said, you know, we have what I would call a satellite office um, at the library where responders are, are there periodically throughout the week um, and assist, assist librarians with issues. And then we, there have also been um, specific cases where departments or agencies, um, other departments and agents or departments in town have asked for um, CRESS responders to assist them on specific issues. Does that answer your question or it, provide a better answer than? It, it does. Mm -hmm. um, we've, we've also talked at length about the hours that the CRESS responders are available. Has there been any change to that given that they're now taking dispatch calls? So there has not been any change in the hours uh, currently. Um, and I think the anticipation is that the hours will be expanded when we're fully staffed. But right now we are, you know, there's only five responders. So um, again, we're sort of skipping ahead, but that's our, uh, our right. Um, uh, Chief Nelson, do you mind if I just go ahead with the, with the hiring process? Pam, uh, I got I got to go. I got got to fire. Okay. All right. So, um, Jennifer, can you skip ahead? I can't remember exactly what number it is that has the search process. Um, right there. So, um, so we are nearing the end of our cross responder search. We have uh, had twelve applicants apply for the search. Um, we had two applicants withdraw from the first from the search. Um, we offered six uh, of the of the remaining ten people who applied second round interviews, and we anticipate um, filling three uh, vacancies. Um, and uh, so I think that when the staff is back at its current full capacity of eight then there will be an expansion of, of hours. And um, I, we have had, in, we meaning internally, the leadership team have, have had many discussions about how the department might be able to expand beyond their current, um, basically, uh, or when they're fully staffed, they're basically 12 hours from eight to eight shift. And I think that it will be the, um, director's job, the new director's job to decide how they're going to staff, whether they're going to have, you know, three shifts or whether they're going to have staggered shift. I, I, I don't, I, I don't know quite how that will be answered, but we, um, given the current staff, I, it has been difficult to go beyond the, um, the hours that are, that are there. The other challenge I think to having, um, an expanded role, but in some way has been resolved is that, you know, the department is in a building that that is generally closed to the public at, at 4 p.m., which is not useful for a department that you want to have uh, where the public would want to have access to it um, for longer hours. And so um, there are, uh, I think that the library is um, amenable to uh, staff being there in the evenings. And of course, they can be dispatched from any location um, um, as long as dispatch knows who's on call and, and where to locate them. And one of the other things that I think has been um, on discussion is, you know, um, um, 
oh, I'm searching for a word. Um, um, to having uh, teams on call. So I, you know, I I don't know how how that will re be resolved. I think it will be one of the issues that the new director will have to resolve. So, um, very very quickly. So that three vacancies that are being filled, does that mean that there's six people potentially to fill those three vacancies? Um, yeah, so there were there were there were 12 initial applicants, two people withdrew. So then there were 10 people who went through the first round of applicants. We interviewed everyone who applied for the job. Of the 10 uh, people who um, were in that first round, then six of those uh, uh, individuals have been offered second round um, in, um, second round interviews. And from that last group of six, we would anticipate that we would um, offer a position to three of the six. Okay. And, and none of these includes the position of the director? No, no, no. This is only the responder search. The director search is, is being handled separately um, and you know, as I said earlier, I'm I'm not participating in the in the director search, so I don't have any, you know, knowledge or data about about that about that search. Understood. Mm -hmm. and what's been done about finding a permanent home for Chris? So there have been lots of discussions about that. Um, uh, one thing that I'm sure you're aware of is that space is at a premium for within the town. And I, I think that the leadership team will make some recommendations. I think the um, assistant town manager has gone through the building and reviewed it and heard the concerns of all of the departments that are in the Bang Center and will be trying to, uh, you know, cre be creative about a resolution. But I, you know, I, we've been here for four months. I don't know what the answer will be about a permanent home for Cress. I do know that in my personal opinion, is that um, it it needs to be in a location where there where access is not restricted in some way, right? Deborah, um, yeah, to kind of go off of what um, Everett was was asking, and and you know, I had to excuse myself a little so a little while, so I wasn't sure, you know, the beginning of this conversation or whether you you've shared some of this or not. But the points that I wanted to make was just that yes. Um, if if the access to to banks kind of it you know kind of shuts down at four, I am in agreement with you, Pamela, that obviously we'd need to either you know have Crest at a place that access is longer so that the community can have that. And and some of what we received in terms of feedback was that sometimes you know doors were locked, they weren't able to get in. I mean things like that. So that kind of open door policy, that feel of Crest being available to the community is also not necessarily happening all the time on a consistent basis. So so I would agree that we need to look for a more permanent home for Crest where it would have this type of access. And and the library, you know, in the meantime, kind of utilizing the library, I don't think that that would be necessarily the best option because we've received um, feedback from the community that the library is not a safe space for, for, for BIPOC people, for community of color, for for, for those who are other uh, are marginalized by 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 a mainstream. And so I don't know if that would be the place that we would want to then, you know, have the kind of overflow for for for, for Crest. So I think, you know, the, these conversations in terms of a place and 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 where is, is very crucial, but we need to continue to think because I don't think the library would be it. And then um and I know you did say, you know, that, you know, the hours will expand once Crest is full, sta fully staffed, you know, at eight and stuff. Just to want to remind, and we're going to talk about the budget at some point, that Crest is not fully staffed at eight. You know, that was not the, the, the original recommendation of CSWG. Um, and, and Crest will never be able to do longer hours and shifts and things like that with eight. So my question is, what is being done so that Crest can actually hire more people once the directors on board 
because with just eight people, that's not going to happen. And that's why our conversation in terms of dispatch is so critical, because if, if they're not getting dispatched the calls, then obviously, what, what are they able to do, right? They're only able to do a minimal amount of their work. And I had heard that, right, that that crest really a lot of times weren't the crest respondents weren't able to do what they're, they're supposed to do because they're not getting the calls and things like that. So I think we want to kind of think about when we say fully staffed, is, is that what we mean when we're saying eight, eight responders? And for me, that's not what we mean. It's not fully staffed. And you won't be able to go to to, to longer hours and, and really uh, benefit the community if, if that's the case. And then lastly, my question for you, Pamela, would be, so, okay, you anticipate filling these three vacancies. Obviously, I know that you can't share details, but I'm assuming, or I'm hoping, and maybe you can shed some light, that some of these applicants, you know, have lived experience, um, you know, have, there's some diversity there, um, you know, our, our, our applicants that have had a wide variety of experiences with uh, community members from all backgrounds, um, have had some type of uh, training in terms of doing um, this type of work. Of course, we're going to provide them with a lot more training, but they have some some type of thing. So I, I want to hear more about that. So I, I don't think that would be appropriate since we're still in the midst of the hiring process to go into details about the background of the applicant. So we, yeah, we I, I did say that, Pamela. Yeah, I didn't say for you to yeah, share. So, I'm just saying generally. Okay. That's my response. So that's your response. That's it. I cannot answer. I at least I am un. I I can't think of a way in which I can answer your question without giving personal detail about the applicants. I mean, it's a very small applicant pool, and if I start to answer that question, then I think it's it. You know, it 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 would be very tricky. So. Um, the position description asks for uh, people with lived experience, lots of different types of background, and but I don't, I don't feel comfortable. Oh, okay, then let me broaden it. Out of the 12 applicants, Pamela, did you all get some diversity, some inclusivity, or not? Because then that would be problematic <laughs> if there's no diversity within the applicant pool. So... You know, this, I I really I, there was diversity in the applicants, but this is a this line of questioning um, really feels very uncomfortable for me, given the fact that we are still in the process of hiring. You know, we we have not offered anybody a position. We are still um, actually in the process of interviewing. There's an interview scheduled for to for for tomorrow. It's I I really do not want to say anything more. So if I if I understand you, then essentially you're being true to the job description that was posted. Exactly. Okay. Any other questions about the cross responder search at this time? Not seeing any questions. So Jennifer, can you go up to the um then just the slide before this one, which is the service contracts? So you'd ask for an update on the service provider contracts. And I think at the last meeting I did state that um because of the procurement laws, the contract with Craig Stores has to go back out for bid. Um it um it did not. Uh, the RFP did not allow for an extension of those services. So there will be an R a new RFP for, um, for, the, for those types of services working with the um, unhoused population. At the last meeting, I stated that we were reviewing the Wildflower Alliance contract and um, our inclination was to ex extend that contract as per the current contract um, to June 30th. Um, at that point, it would go out for bid because it would be um, the contract period would end it. Um, and that is the same. The same is also true of the contract with Sarah Shefflin. Um, 
the those contracts uh the extensions uh documents have to be completed completed before December 30th or before December 31st and so um I'm working with the leadership team to um to have those extensions um completed be before the deadline I'm confused. So you said so for Crest Doors, Wildfire Alliance, and the Sarah Shefflin one, they're all going to be going out to bid? No. Um, okay. So yeah, Craig's, can you stop by again? I guess I was a, a bit Okay. Confused. So Craig's Doors um, must go out for bid pursuant to the procurement um, uh, laws in the state. The, the way in which that contract was um, executed does not allow for an extension. So mm -hmm. it has to go out for bid. Mm -hmm. The two re the two other contracts um, can be extended to June thirtieth, okay, of twenty twenty four, and at that point they too would have to be um, go out for bid. Okay. So there is a six month extension from January first to June thirtieth for those remaining two contracts. The contracts um, as they currently exist would expire on December thirty first. And so we, um, as a leadership team, are trying to work diligently to get them completed before December 31st so that they can be extended. Okay. So the plan will be then to extend Wildfire Alliance. And I'm not very, um, what is it? I'm not sure what Sarah Shefflin, actually, if you could let me know what that is. What, what that one is for but so those two are going to get extended and then Craig's door because of the law they're going to go up for bit right that's correct so mm -hmm. Sarah Shefflin was involved um in a lot of the initial training for the responders um around de-escalation and motivational um interviewing techniques and since the hope is to have three new responders um she would be um uh, repeating some of the training that she did earlier with the first group of responders. Um, and the thinking is that um, one of the current responders was hired, you know, after that first initial group of eight, that that responder and the three additional new people would go through as a cohort again through the full training program. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. May I? add something not about the service provider contracts. Um, so I, I, I had the chance to read all the things that Crest has done um, up until this point based on what's in this PowerPoint. And I believe the pages um, four, five, six, and seven, which precedes this page that we're looking at, um, you know, it, it would suggest that Chris has been doing some things, but if you read what's written on the paper, none of it is an alternative to public safety. It's It doesn't suggest that they're doing anything within the original mandate. And I want you to fully appreciate and understand the frustration that is being seen by this group and that we're giving back to you. Mm -hmm. um, and for, because again, we we appreciate that you know you guys are in a situation that you didn't anticipate. You're trying to fill a gap that you're not supposed to be filling. But you know there had to have been some thought process from this interim leadership team to say, when we go back to CSSJC, we're going to hear all these things back. And to come here and say, um, you know, these are the things that Cress is going to start with. And, and, and while I do appreciate that there's a benchmark from the Harvard study that says, you know, 18 months, um, it doesn't mean that we have to wait the 18 months. As, as Chief Nolan said, you know, Chief Nelson said, you know, it's we start small. And um, the the cases I've mentioned, you know, the disorderly conduct, the noise complaints, um, quite frankly, trespassing. Um, 
those are small things because when I read all that, and, you know, it's great that Cress is making themselves known throughout the community, but nothing on there indicates that Cress is making themselves known to the community as an alternative to police or, you know, and an, a group that's going to respond to non-violent situations to minimize the need of having police respond to everything. So it's, I, I, I think... Um, it is a little bit problematic. Um, I, I again, I, I want to be supportive of this leadership team. Um, I do appreciate, you know, you guys are doing your level best, but I, I think you guys can do more. I, I think you can push a little bit more. Yeah. It is, so, we're, oh, I'm I, sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. We're not saying just thrust these people out into the wild and have them take these crazy calls that they're not trained for but you know for the people that are listening they really want to see some kind of concrete result to say here is what happened a few years ago here's all the work that went into it these are the recommendations made and yes while there have been some hiccups we are at a place to say we're making some kind of progress and i I will agree and appreciate that, yes, taking dispatch calls is progress because that is a humongous deal. Um, but everything that's written on paper is indicating that CREST is a social services program. And that is the issue and the frustration that we have. So, I mean, obviously, I, the, I feel that and I will say that I'm speaking for myself and not for the leadership team, that I am feeling the brunt of frustration of 18 months of Crest not meeting, uh, more than 18 months, so probably almost two, if not three years of Crest not meeting the needs of the uh, community. However, my role has been four months. And so, um, you know, I... I can, again, speaking for myself, am doing everything that I can possibly do um, to move this department in the right direction, in the right way. Um, you know, I would, and the initial meeting where we talked about the creation of the leadership team, there was um, concern about um, the leadership team uh, my role in the leadership team. And I said, you know, I did not take this job on to fail. I, I And quite frankly, did not want the job, but I am, you know, have, have taken on the responsibility and I am pushing in every possible way to move the department towards the mission that that was identified. I don't really know if I have any capacity to move at a pace that's any faster than the pace that I'm going at. Quite frankly, I'm like, you know, I am, um, you know, I'm exhausted all the time. The DEI department is suffering greatly because all of my time and energy is spent with Cress. Um, you know, Jennifer has taken on you know, a yeoman's share of doing the work for the DEI department and it is limping along. And this is not how I anticipated the year, this year going for DEI. We had really great, great plans for how we were going to expand our own work. That being said, I'm, you know, obviously we're not unaware that there are desires of the community, um, but there is a pace at which I can, can work. And, um, you know, I, I am really nearing capacity. There is a reason why I said publicly, you know, I am pushing towards having someone else in this role by the new year. And there is a reason why, as a professional, I think it's important to be a, a part of the onboarding for the new director. But some of this work will have to be on the shoulders of the new director to complete the design that the community wants. It's just, you know, I frankly am not capable of giving much more without having um, a physical and 
mental breakdown. And I'm just being frank about that. Like, you know, the continual push, push, push. Certainly I get it. There are demands that the this department, um, you know, that this um, committee wants and expectations. I'm a human being. I have limitations. I would love to have a personal and family life. And um, while I think that your concerns are legitimate and that they have merit, I think that the expectation of the leadership team might be more than the team is capable of doing. Like these are large policy decisions that should in my opinion, be directed to the people who are in charge of making those large policy decisions, which is not me. And and, and thank you for saying that. And I, I, I do think you're doing your level best and I do think you're overextended. And I um, in by no means in any way um, are we holding you personally responsible. We are not. We do see um, and hear everything that you're doing that you should not be doing. And I, I think I speak on behalf of everyone. We say we greatly appreciate the fact that you actually stepped up because quite frankly, um, you, as much as we have our reservations, you guys are keeping it going. So um, we very much appreciate that. But I, at the same time, you're on the leadership committee. And unfortunately, I, it's, it's a double-edged sword, but um, sadly, rightfully sadly, that is the way it is. You might not be um, to your point when you're doing all these things that you're not supposed to be doing. You may not be the best person. And we would we would understand to your point, you know, not one to be on the team anymore um, after the year is over. And that may make sense because yes, if this is not what you're, um, what you're meant to do, um, it's reasonable to see that you may want to step back. And and I agree with you that some of these decisions are policy decisions that you guys cannot make. So um, again, it is not personally against you. Um, and I hope you don't take it as that, but as part of the leadership team, and because you're the face we see the most, unfortunately, you're the one who has to hear it. Yeah. Let me let me chime in with that too, um, Pamela. So, um, yeah, I mean, all of what Everell said it, it, it is, I'm definitely in agreement with it. Um, in terms of you saying that you're not the one to kind of make those kind of big decisions, and that we should go to the, those that make those big decisions. Well, I have tried to go to those that make the big decisions, and they've referred us back to you all, right? So the town council, which I contacted Lynn, and, and, and I don't have any problem to, to say this on here, right? So it's it's recorded and it's on, <laughs> it's 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 uh, captured, right? In, in real, real life that I contacted Lynn and asked some of these questions and I've contacted Paul and asked some of these questions and have gotten no response, right? Or very limited response from them. Um, and so that means, you know, we have to, to, to talk it with you. And I recall, right, when you were first appointed that you said the buck stopped with you. You know what I'm saying? That you were the one that were going to be making these decisions and so on and so forth. And if you recall, I had actually said that I didn't think it was a good idea for you to be in this position because I knew you were going to get overextended. And I was actually looking out for you, you know? So here we go, a couple months later, that is the case. Um, but we are the voice of the community. If we don't bring these things up, no one else is going to bring these things up for the community. Community members are contacting me and letting me know, right, that this is what they want to have happen in, in Crest, right? They want Crest to be this independent public alternative policing, public safety, right? And then we're seeing that it's, it's and, and again, I stand by my words, that it's being taken in a different direction, right? And it's being baby stepped in a way that, you know, again, the, these dispatch calls, even though, yes, now they're going to be dispatched, but they're going to be dispatch calls of some of the same, right? So there was nothing new that was added to it. And when you bring up Earl saying that he only had three of them and now you all extended it, Earl was under the gun. I mean, Earl was telling us for months that there was a lot of resistance. So yes, he, he probably was going to start with three. And remember, because he started with three, 
you know, I don't want to say anything, but, you know, those dispatch calls was signed in August. And all of a sudden he's on unpaid administrative leave. So, and that's when he was pushing three. <laughs> um, so that's why I'm saying why we are very concerned right, is that the resistance is real. And when, when, when certain steps are taken, then actions are taken against, against people that want to actually broaden and want to make Cress do what it, it was, was, was established to do. The pushback is real, right? Uh, uh, director is gone. <laughs> pushback is real. And so what message are we sending to a new director that wants to come in, right? Is this director gonna be independent? Is this director going to be able to make independent decisions and actually lead Crest into what they're supposed to do? And that's why I am concerned. You all have said it's going to be onboarding, but I am concerned that there's going to be certain telltale. This is, you know, this is kind of like the playbook, and this is the direction you 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 go down on. And and then again, the community concerns, which we are the voice of, get set to the side. And Crest does not get to be what it's supposed to be. It is new. We all knew it was new. We all knew that it, this is, we're leaders in Mass, in the state of Massachusetts and beyond in terms of what we're doing. So we knew there was going to be challenges and so on and so forth, but we didn't know there was going to be this level of resistance from this patch and from the police. Because that is the thing, right? If, if Crest starts taking, and I'm going to be very clear, if Crest starts taking on uh, uh, complaints, if Crest starts taking disorderly, and and Crest starts taking some of these thing, other things, the police department are going to feel like they're what are what are they there for, right? And so on and so forth. So there is resistance for that reason, Pamela. You know, and I'm going to share that with you, and I'm going to share that with the interim leadership team that actually has a police person on there, <laughs> who's not going to be happy with me saying these things, <laughs> right? And, and that was the point. One of our recommendations in CSWG was to reduce the size naturally of the police department, right? So I can see why you want to take these small, 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 small steps. But for the community, no, we need to take big steps because this is why Crest was created, was to actually do these things and to, yes, so that the police department don't have to be as big as they are. That would be the ultimate because the crest would be taking on some of these other things. So I'm going to be pointing these out. That is my job. And I'm sorry that you're the one that has to, to bear the brunt. But unfortunately, you are the one that has to bear the brunt because of who is on this leadership team. Are we ready to return to the PowerPoint? I think so. So I think the only thing that um, is remaining from the PowerPoint is just a summary of some of the um, some of the types of neighbor services that have been provided. And rather than um, than going through them, I would really like to spend some time on the um, data one, which is I think might be slide uh, further down. Uh, yeah, right there, the last one, the, the the current one that you have on the on the data. So the prior slides, as um, Attorney Henry um, pointed out, uh, talk about the types of interactions that the responders have been engaged in. Um, what's not provided there? So those are just short narratives about the types of interactions that they've had. Um, what you'll see as far as the data is that in June, the Donahue Institute um, prepared a report for the Crest Department advising that they move to a different software system called Qualtrics. Um, in October, the in-house data collection system that the department was using was revised, and then a second revision was done in November. So um, one of the calls from the committee had been for specific data and I have um, purposely not provided that because I don't know that or I don't have faith in the data collection that we currently have existed. We, you know, we're straddling several different um, types of systems, which is why I opted to, 
to provide the narratives that are provided. On, on average, the uh, department is responding to approximately 20 calls per week. Um, and the, we've had conversations with the town's IT department, which would be responsible for procuring the software system or procuring call tracks. And we've had um, conversations without IT and then two conversations with the soft, with the Qualtrics um, software provider in November and then the beginning of this month. Um, the department will be moving at forward with procuring um, Qualtrics, which is the system that the Donahue um, Institute suggested. If we are fortunate, that will happen before the beginning of um, of the new year, and then the the department will have the capability to capture data in a more reliable way. Um, I think that data collection will be um, will be. I don't want to use the will be and. I'm searching for a, the word will be, um, I don't want to say problematic, but there will be some concerns maybe about data collection for some time to come until there is a new CAD system in place that reflects the ability to capture information from both um, police, fire, and the responders union. And, and the, the expectation is that that new CAD system will be in place, I think in 20, sometime in 2024, but I don't know the exact date. So I think in the prior conversations, we've covered um, everything else that was on the agenda. Um, I have a question. Um, so I think Chief Nelson, when I asked him about the data um, relevant to why um, noise complaints and disorderlies weren't, weren't included. He said that the police have some data. And so I, I guess, can you clarify that? Where can we get that data in terms okay. of why it is? So yeah. I I, I um, can't cl clarify that because I don't really know what he was talking about. Like the, the information that I have about, um, about the call types have all come from the Harvard government lab and from the list uh, prior, the former director had prepared a list of potential call types and a rollout, and that's the information that I looked at. So I can, um, I can ask uh, Chief Nelson what he was referring to, but I, I don't, I don't know specifically what he was referring to. Yeah, I, I, I want to get more information on that because. You know, this is what he stated that there that some of these decisions in terms of not including noise complaints and disorderlies was because of supposed data that showcased that those can be more violent. So yeah, you know, I I want to I want to see the numbers in terms of that. Um, and so you know, again, I I I understand. I've just kind of pointed out why possibly Earl was being very cautious in terms of his rollout because it was a lot of resistance. Ergo what happened to him. So, um, so I don't think we can go by that, right? We, we need to go by, again, the mandate, the mission, and what, what Crest is supposed to do. And so, so for me, when you said, I think you did throw out there, you said 20 calls per week that they're responding to. I mean, that's not a lot of calls. Mm -hmm. So then what are they doing with the rest of the time? If, if, if they're just responding to 20 calls per week, that's not what, again, was envisioned for Cress. I mean, again, Cress is being, basically it's kind of like, you know, you're being told to wash dishes with no arms or, or, or what have you, you know what I'm saying? Or with one arm tied behind your back or, or whatever the case, I forget what the, the lingo is that people say. It, it's just like, you're really not allowing Cress to grow and to do what it's supposed to do. Um, so then you have even five responders, right? And then you're going to have eight responders, you know, responding to what? Maybe, you know, once the dispatch starts, like 25 calls per week, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, what is going on here? You know what I'm saying? They're getting hampered and, and not being able to do what they're supposed to do. So is there a response to why are they only responding to 20 calls per week? Okay, so... 
I, I'm not sure, sure that I understood your question. So I will just say that the, the 20 calls um, that are recorded here are calls that come in directly uh, to the Crest Department or interactions no, no. that are coming directly to the, to the Crest Department. So I would anticipate that when they are being dispatched, that that number would increase. Like that's the total number um, that are currently coming into Crest directly. When I would anticipate that when they're um, receiving calls from dispatch, that that number would would increase because it would be a combination. I think that the plan had always been that that they would receive calls from dispatch, or they would be yeah, they would be dispatched to calls from dispatch, and that individuals or departments or whomever would also have the ability to contact the department directly. Yeah, but what I guess I get it. I, I do know that obviously the 20 calls has been because of calls made directly to them because they haven't been dispatched, right? Mm -hmm. But but in terms of the list that I saw that you all are, are gonna the calls that are going to be dispatched. I don't I, I don't foresee it increasing by by that much in terms of the fact that you all haven't added the other some of the other matters that, that we discussed earlier on, in this meeting. And for me, it's just kind of like so they've been in place for like about 18 months, close, soon enough, close to two, two years. And so then what have what has Crest been doing, right? And so that's why we have been pushing for this patch and for them to be able to do everything that they were created to do, which was anything nonviolent, non jailable offenses. When when it's 20 calls per week, let's say that they're getting, you, you see what I'm saying? I'm just kind of like, yes, there would be problems because, you know, when, when people are just idle or, or not able to do what they're supposed to do, yes, there'll be issues. So I guess that's my question. So what are they doing? Mm -hmm. So I think that the narratives provide uh, an overview of some of the types of calls that they have, um, that they've been responding to. In addition to that, the leadership team has been conducting in-service trainings with them. We have been inviting in different service providers so that they can learn about the types of services that are available. They have been going to um, different trainings that are provided. So uh, I talked earlier that we have a responder who's attending the 40 hour crisis intervention training. So we have been um, providing them with lots of professional development opportunities and other types of activities to I think, in our opinion, prepare them to to do the work that they are called to do. I think, um, Evro, you have your hand up. I, I, I do, um, Miss Young. In terms of the training, has there been any training offered or provided by? Um, Amherst PD as a way of best practices, or this is how we've handled these situations in the past? Uh, they've received, they have, well, during the last four months, they have not received training directly from um, Amherst, from the Amherst Police Department, but they have done some, um, received training from some other law, law enforcement agencies, the CRES, the crisis intervention training is a training that's done through a regional agency. There's another training that's coming up um, in January that's done through a regional, um, you know, or through a group, some sort of regional group. I'm not, um, I'm not recalling the specific name right now. Um, they have also been, um, uh, gone over and done some training and shadowing with dispatch, uh, and they will, they're renewing, they did that previously, um, early on, um, some shadowing and some training with dispatch, and, and, to, um, and they are, we have set up for the, for all the responders to have another opportunity to shadow um, um, with dispatch again, beginning, I think, next week. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And if I may make a request, even if you're not here for the next meeting, can we get a report of um, 
trespassing, disorderly conduct, noise complaints, and city ordinances like open container call, um, calls for the last two years. And if we can also get a breakdown, how many of those calls actually led to an arrest? Okay. So I will have to request that information from the police department, obviously, because yes. I don't have it. Understood. So, you know, if I can get it from them, I, you know, but I will make the request. So it's trespass disorderly. And what's the third one? Most complaints. Mm -hmm. um, town ordinance typically covers like open containers. Mm -hmm. um, and from those calls, how many of them turn into arrests? Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are we feeling like we're ready to move on to DEI updates or is there more on the PowerPoint that I'm missing? Uh, I think we've covered everything on the PowerPoint. Great. Okay, so um, I'll just roll into the DEI um, updates. So the DEI department and the Human Rights Commission held their annual Universal Declaration of Human Rights event on Sunday. And it was a small crowd, which I think is uh, typical um, in the Bang Center. Um, upcoming events, uh, Jennifer's already talked about uh, Kwanzaa. Um, we will have uh, plans for um, Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Um, celebration, a National Day of Racial Healing, um, Black History Month, and Lunar New Year are the cultural events that are um, that are coming up for the DEI department. So we're pretty jam packed between now and um, February with the planning of of cultural events. Um, the youth survey uh, um, was revised to include information for. Uh, the data, the uh, demographic data that you um, all commented on the last time, and um, Ace is on the call. Uh, I'm not sure if whether that has been distributed or not. I'm not, but um, but that has the the survey was revised to include the information. So, Asa, could you talk just a little bit about what the plan for rollout is? Um, yes, the plan is to um, send it out to clubs at um, the Amherst High School, Middle School, um, the uh, club leaders for the, um, and have them help send it out. Um, the end of this week and into the next week, I can, I'm also going to be contacting the um, AmeriCorps members that work regularly at the high school to um, send this out. Um, I know it's been a little bit delayed. Um, I've been mostly working on, on uh, data work for CRESS for this past couple of weeks but uh, we're gonna get back on track. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, can I just add, um, Asa, so it's not so much that the club leaders, it's the staff liaisons to the club. So the guidance, whatever teachers are um, responsible for the club, as well as we'll be going to the high school and to the middle school around their lunch periods, which is the time that all the students filter through that space and have the survey available hard copy and available for the QR code so kids can fill it out as well that way. I wonder, yeah. um, I was talking to somebody recently and they said that the high school has changed their schedule around so that at the end of the day, everybody has like advisory block or something and that sometimes they have been having um, like guest speakers and stuff like that come in. Um, so that's I've through been... a particular class okay. that that's happening. Okay. So that's through um, an individual's, uh, one of the teacher's classes. Okay, so it's not just... No, they have a weird block period, it's yeah. like 80 minutes, but it's that's the particular teacher. So all the different teachers have different things that they're doing at that time. And so it was suggested by the assistant 
principle that we come at lunchtime because the children all filter throughout at that time, that that would be the best time. So um, Jennifer and I will be uh, training um, uh, CRESS members and members of the core equity team to serve as facilitators for the National Day of Racial Healing, which is um, the same uh, program that we did last year through the Kellogg Foundation. Um, and then we will be um, working on finalizing um, our DEI training for town departments, which is, you know, we in, let's see, I think it was September, October, all of the town, we completed the first round of all town departments. And so we are a little delayed, but we will start our second round of all town departments um, with, um, with workshops. Um, and then we'll schedule, create a schedule for our monthly workshop. So on the uh, third Friday of each month, the department hosts um, a DEI related workshop that is open to all staff. Um, those have been in person. And I think one of our challenges for the next year will be to think about how we might be able to do some of them um, hybrid or recorded so that members of um, from various departments who are unable to do the in-person workshops have access to that, we can start to build out a library. One of the, um, one, fee one uh, topic that has come up um, repeatedly is to do um, a workshop on bystander awareness. And um, so that will certainly be on the list and we'll be thinking about what the other workshops will be for um, from January until June. Um, in um, this past fall, we uh, had originally scheduled um, two workshops to be conducted by our colleagues at Amherst College. And um, we'll probably reach out to them again to see if we can again, utilize some of their services for conducting workshops for um, for our staff. And um, I can roll into the Rob conversation, but before I do that, um, Jennifer, have I left out anything? Okay, all right. So the Resident Oversight Board, um, as I think we discussed at the last meeting, a consultant was hired. The consultant is holding th um, four public forums. The first one will be on Sunday from one to three. It's in the um, town hall room and will be conducted um, as hybrid, so both in person and, um, and online. There is a survey that would be available for folks to, um, to access um, online at, and there will also be paper copies available for individuals who want to, um, you know, want to fill out the survey. Um, she has a range for translation services in three, two or three primary languages. I'm, I'm not remembering all the details at this point. So there, but there will be translation um, services available. We have not, uh, we did, I think on the, on the, flyer advertise um, that we could provide childcare, but to my knowledge, we have not had anyone indicate that childcare would be needed. The four open forums are um, uh, an opportunity for members of the community to express their desires and wants and um, experiences around first uh, the Amherst Police Department, and then secondly, um, the res what they would want in a resident oversight board. At the conclusion of this consultant's work, which will be, I believe, the last um, would be like mid-January is when the last form is scheduled. Um, a report will be written and then presented to the department, and um, and then uh, that report will be shared with. There will be a second. Uh, I'm going to get the acronym incorrect because I'm tired and a little brain dead at this point. Um, but I think it's an SEQ or SQE, I can't remember, but um, there'll be a second procurement process to hire someone with 
technical expertise to do the onboarding of the resident oversight board. So some um, an expert who would write the policy for the resident oversight board, do the training of the first um, 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 individuals who are selected for the resident oversight board with an anticipation that those um, individuals and the board would be up and running before the end of this fiscal, the town's fiscal year. So before the end of June 30th. So, I have some questions. Oh, did you want to go, Avril? I just did have you, one. Then I'll go. I, I just have one question. So based on that, uh, Ms. Young, does that mean that the town is actively moving forward with forming a resident oversight board? Yes. Okay. I mean, the so there was, prior to your joining the this group, there was an RFP that went out. I can't remember the dates. Um, but um, earlier this year, that was a very comprehensive RFP, which sought to have a consultant do both phases to do the community outreach and then to roll right into the technical expertise. Um, through that process, um, uh, we were not able to, uh, to contract with a consultant to do both phases of the work. So then, um, as a result, it was asked by the town manager to envision two separate processes. Um, so working with the finance, um, the prior finance director, um, um, the current process was developed where one, um, I can't remember what it's called, but I want to say it's like solicit solicitation of quali qualified or experts or whatever it's called, it might be SQE. Um, the first part was to do the, the, um, the community um, engagement piece. And then following that, the design is to have an, uh, an expert do the technical aspects of writing the board's policies, training the board, um, and getting it um, up and running. So the large RFP was divided into two separate processes. And we are, you know, we're by the, I would say the end of January, um, early February, probably at the latest, uh, we would have um, the complete report from the from the first process that we're we're in the midst of. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, April. Um, so Pamela, I have some, uh, questions in terms of this, um, which is, and I've, I've already, you know, spoken about this, but I'll continue to be on the record and, and continue to speak about this, that CSWG had done this, the work on the, uh, resident oversight board. So, and I, and I said this to Rabbi Deborah too, when she, when, when we spoke that again, that getting feedback from the community when we had already gotten feedback from the community <laughs> that's saying that this was needed. Um, I, I, I don't understand why, again, you know, the step is being taken, which again, like I said before, is more of a delay tactic. Um, so as not to, you know, have one establish the resident oversight board and have the resident oversight board do what it's supposed to do, which is something that we're seeing happen with Crest. Right, because then it's going to be the same arguments. Well, this is new; we've never had this before, and so we need to take baby steps, and so on and so forth. Right. Um, so uh, instead of this time being utilized to actually look at how the resident oversight board can be truly independent, how they can have subpoena power, and how they can actually do their work, so that when they do their independent investigations and make their recommendations those recommendations can actually be put into place given the strong police union that is in place. So instead of us spending our time focusing on those issues, right? We're spending our time going back to the community and asking whether a resident oversight board is a good idea. So uh, again, and I pose this to the town manager. So, so I guess Amherst who always says they don't have the money I guess you all have the money because you, you gave us money in CSWG to hire consultants, which we did. And we came up with those the data from talking with the community. But now you all are spending money <laughs> to do the same thing. So 
so you say you don't have money, but then you have money to kind of spin the wheels, right? So, um, so my question is this report, and I pose this to, 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 to Rabbi Deborah, she's going to do a report and I need, what was the timetable? I know you said, you know, by the end of the fiscal year, by the end of the fiscal year, what is exactly going to happen? Are we going to have an independent body that's going to be able to investigate with subpoena power to be able to do the work that they are going to, to you know, be able to do so that they're not intimidated by the police so they can truly be independent? And are their recommendations going to be taken seriously once they do uh, have recommendations because then the police union is going to intervene and so on and so forth? So, so again, uh, I want to, I want to ask this right timetable. Is that what's going to happen? Because if you all are not dealing with those issues, then I don't see that being a reality. I don't think I can uh, have the capability to answer your question. And why not? Uh, because I don't have a crystal ball that would allow me to look into the future to determine whether there would be a subpoena power um, uh, at the end of this process. So what I can say is that the process is that a report is going to be written and the recommendations of the those reports will go forward. And the, it is anticipated that before the end of the year, um, there would be a resident oversight board um, uh, up and running given the assistance of the second part of the process, which is uh, technical assistance from an expert. Mm. So so up and running, that up and running is what I wanna know. And, and, and Pamela, I don't need you to have a, a crystal ball. Everything had been already written in the CSWG in terms of what it was that this resident oversight board was supposed to do. Again, I, I, I wanna, you know, Chief Nelson and, and you and others keep on, on, on having issues with us bringing up um, um, these concerns. We were put in place to look at the recommendations that CSWG had made and right, and to continue making other recommendations too, but to make sure that those recommendations were not put on a shelf to collect dust. It was to look at those recommendations and make sure that those recommendations were put in place. Like for instance, I didn't even waste the time to talk about youth empowerment and the fact that there's no center, that there's no budget, that we haven't even gotten to that, right? Yeah, because again, I'm a broken record. But this is why CSSJC was, was created. And I'm sorry if, if, if it's a problem to you, if it's a problem to others, but this is why we were created, to ask these questions, mm -hmm. to bring it up and to really talk about the delay, the delay, delay, delay that continues to happen. And then what, what, what is the outcome of that? Then the community and specifically BIPOC community members who again are being intimidated and terrorized, don't have a place to go to complain about the police. I mean, that's the outcome, right? No place for community members to go and to file, because if they file complaints with the police right now, they will then be harassed. Mm -hmm. And so where do they go in the time being in order to be able to, to, to file these complaints? Because we saw what happened with, July, with, with the July 5th situation. Mm -hmm. There was so, nowhere to file complaints. There was nothing that, that occurred afterwards besides a lot of talk. So I think the one option is the post commission, although it's limited in scope to what types of complaints they, that they can hear, but that would be an option. Uh, a second option would be um, if there are issues of police misconduct to bring them to the attention of the district attorney. Um, so those are the options that I can think of off the top of my head. Exactly, because we, we're, we're spending time doing things instead of actually putting that resident oversight board. I wanna remind this committee and, and remind you and remind others that are listening that these recommendations were made again back in 2021 and we're about to go into 2024 and we're still up having town forums around the resident oversight board as opposed to actually focusing on the issues that our that leap consultant that we hired right that the town spent money that the town says has no money but that were hired and 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 seventh generation collective movement collective that gave us the information for us to make the recommendations that we did 
and we're about to go into 2024 and we're still nowhere. Ms. Young, mm -hmm. are, you, are you able to answer if there is a recommendation for the resident oversight board to have subpoena powers, are you able to say whether or not the town will adopt that recommendation? I don't know if I can. <laughs> I, I don't know if I have the ability or the authority to 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 um, to answer that question. I mean, I the tasks that I've been assigned and my role in the DEI capacity is to go through this process to have recommendations and a formal and to hire someone to bring to to stand up the resident oversight board and that's what i'm doing whether whether the town manager and the town council will follow the recommendation is the rec if the recommendation is to have subpoena power i that i can i cannot say i don't i don't know if i have the ability to answer that that's fair I can just tell you now um, that you mentioned if residents are unhappy with the police, they can complain to the district attorney's office. While they can, um, there is a close relationship and there has to be a close relationship with the district attorney's office. And so it puts them in a very bad slash awkward position for them to actually do anything. So a resident oversight board, I think, I, I would probably be welcomed mm -hmm. by the district attorney's office because again, it removes them from the equation of having to do something that they have to work with day in and day out. So I just want to put that out there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I I agree with you. It's a very awkward, but in answer to the question of what are where are the opportunities for people to file a complaint, the answer currently is the district attorney's office or the post commission those are the those are the only two options that i that i know of so and i'm just ass assuming that any board that would be created would have to go through the town's legal counsel and spend whatever arbitration with unions and whatnot or right exactly yeah um you know there would be uh especially if the um if the board composition uh or the board's authority is to have um the ability to uh discipline police officers that's definitely going to have to go to collective bargaining it's going to be impact bargaining for sure um I mean, I just, I think about Dee when I, when we talk about the Resident Oversight Board because of her hard work in doing the research with 7Gen and how passionately she spoke about the need for having subpoena power. And, and so it's, it's something that I see as being really important um, as a suggestion from the CSSJC for the resident oversight board to move forward and i did say that to um, rabbi deb when we spoke um i'm also just kind of struck by deborah's comment that you know the the initial recommendations were made in 2021 and here we are 2023 but one thing that hadn't happened yet when the initial reg recommendations were made was um, the july 5th incident of last year and i think about how important it would have been for those families to potentially have an outlet and i will say i did file with the post commission and i have not heard anything back to date and that has been almost a year so i i don't think justice would be swift with the post commission because it is statewide and i don't know if it's um you know it's still working out its kinks itself but um so I did, what I did was I forwarded her the document that the families had put together for our final meeting with town council um, that included the voices of the youth and the voices of the families and how they perceived the incident that happened that night. Um, 
so that she had that as part, you know, maybe she can utilize some of that for her report since I think it was a pretty thorough picture from the youth's perspective of what had happened. Um, but I think, I think it's an important thing to move forward with. And I think one of the feedbacks, one of the pieces of feedback that we heard at the in-person forum that we held about Cress was the town's need for some sort of place that wasn't just a resident oversight board, but a place where um, residents can bring their complaints and about any civil rights or human rights issue. And again, with the Human Rights Commission being an option, but an option that doesn't really have the power to, to yeah. So I um, don't mean to cut you off, but I mean, it, so the Human Rights Commission has the broadest possible purview for hearing complaints, mm -hmm. but absolutely uh, very little authority for adjudicating anything. Right. Um, and I, um, I think that the members of the HRC um, are are looking for ways well they're looking they've been in communication with the general counsel the co-chairs have met with the general counsel to look at revising the bylaw um but i believe that they're going to um, encounter some um, obstacles, some hurdles to the ability to do any adjudication of any any types of cases, regardless of what. But the way that the bylaw is currently written, anyone can bring forth a complaint um, from any time period. There's no statute of limitations. So 20 years ago, five years ago, what if you felt like there was an issue involving um, um, any sort of a civil rights or um, uh, our allegation of discrimination, you could bring forth a complaint um, and the HRC could hear it, but there's very little action that they can take. And, um, the, you know, the existing forms for adjudicating um, complaints. So the primary agency is the Mass Commission Against Discrimination, but it is limited. And um, as you noted, the post is still trying to work out some of their processes. I think the uh, the um, the advantage of having filed, uh, if someone chose to file a complaint with post, is that they create a record, and th there is hopefully the state is actually tracking that. But the, but the post legislation limits the types of um, the types of complaints that they look. Uh, that they're receiving to allegations of um, of uh, racial discrimination. There's something else in the racial discrimination category, um, use of a of a firearm or weapon, um, and um, you know serious bodily injury or death. So very limited in the types of cases that they're that they're reviewing. Deborah. Yeah, so Pamela, now that, you know, we've discussed this a little bit more to kind of, you know, go into more details in terms of, of why I started, you know, this with with the remarks that I made. Um, the fact that, and, you know, that is my world, Mass Commission Against Discrimination, because you know, my background in terms of diversity, equity, inclusion, Title IX, um, um, harassment, discrimination, those, anything statewide, federal takes a very long time for the most part. So we're talking about people and there's those that, that unfortunately, because of the color of their skin or their income or their background are getting continually harassed by the police on a weekly, monthly basis, because they're already on their scope. They're targeted. So what are they supposed to do in the meantime? So I don't, I don't have um, an, a good answer for you. I mean, I am in the same situation as everyone else who's a person of color, who's living in this world with, with you know, those limitations. All I can say is offer what I've said previously, which is that the processes in place 
And it is my great hope and expectation is that there will be a recommendation that leads to a resident oversight board, um, you know, coming into fruition by the end of the year. But as you also have pointed out, there are, um, it's not simply a decision that this office shepherding can do alone. It's also going to involve other officers and um, offices and departments in town because we will have to do impact pack Barton. I mean, one of the, one of the first questions that I um, asked actually last year when I started was whether um, someone had <laughs> engaged in impact bargaining with the departments about these issues because their contracts were in discussion. Um, and, you know, for some reason that had not occurred, but it's not within, you know, that was not uh, a duty or responsibility of, of my office. And unfortunately we had a transition in the HR department. So, you know, I don't, I, I can't provide you with anything other than the facts of, of, of what have occurred, have the facts that I've, that have occurred during the time that I'm here. So for me, you know, and I hear you obviously, um, in terms of, of your limitations, but for me, in terms of being on this committee, then I am feeling failing as a committee member. If after almost three years, after those recommendations were put in place, we're still at square one in regards to this, which is exploring, asking questions, so on and so forth. Then I'm the failure in terms of not moving this phase along, right? And so I, I'm putting it out here again, publicly, ad nauseum, multiple times, for Paul Bachman to come meet with us. Maybe he can answer some of these questions because you know, you are limited in terms of ask and answering um, these questions. So, Paul, we'd like to invite you again. You know, we've in invited you in writing. We've invited you verbally to come meet with, our, with us so that we can discuss some of these issues. Because right now, as you stated, H HRC, unfortunately, doesn't have that, that capability. You don't have that capability. No one's going to the police because, obviously... For, for obvious reasons. And so there is no no place. And then you all are not moving in terms of if this resident oversight board because where things are at is not a good place. It, it really isn't. So since you're limited, I'm, I'm putting it out there. Paul or Lynn, Lynn, town council. Because town council, when I contacted them, they said that it, it was Paul that's in charge of, of making these things happen. But it, since things aren't happening and Paul is not willing to come meet with us, then, you know, I invite, I think Dorothy is is there in, in, in the audience. I, I know she's listening. I invite the town council to um, have a joint meeting with us so that we can, we can have these conversations. Because this is not acceptable. So anything, any other reports, Pamela, in terms of, of your area? Because I know that you wanted to leave after. Yeah, I, I think that, I mean, we've gone through Crest DEI, the Youth Empowerment, um, and the Resident Oversight Board. If there are um, other things that you, other questions that you have um, for me about any of the other things on your agenda, I'll uh, try to answer them. But as I stated earlier, like I'm not involved in either the police chief um, or the crest director search. Um, so I don't know if there are any other questions for me. Doesn't appear that way. Yeah. All right, so I have as my, um, before I sign off, um, as the 
two things as a takeaway, which are um, to ask Chief Nelson for the information that he was referring to and to ask um, the police department for two years of data on trespass, disorderly, um, noise, and town um, ordinance um, complaints. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. And that, yeah, that led to arrest. So yeah. So all right. Well, with that. Oh, one one last thing. So in terms of data, you said that you all are in between data for Crest. So when will we be able to get some data on on Crest? When so I I I don't know because right now we're in the process of trying to acquire the Qualtrics system. Mm -hmm. um, which is what was recommended for the department and everything is proceeding, um, you know, for that purchase to go through, but we don't have um, a data system that's up and running that, in my opinion, is fully accurate. Um, the other issue, as I uh, spoke about earlier, is that the current CAD system, which would be another place where data would be collected about the work of the responders um, does not have the capability to capture um, um, robustly the the work that the responders are doing. And it is anticipated that there will be a new CAD system purchase that will include a category for responders. So once we um, purchase Qualtrics, then at least we will have that part of the system up and running um but there will all there there's still going to be a miss a missing piece because of the the limitations of the current cad system well thank you pamela for joining um um just hopefully for the next meeting um you know the uh, interim leadership team can uh, attend uh, you know i just like to say it'll be a good idea for just to, until you all phase out to continue to 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 come and present to us so that we can continue to engage in this dialogue. Well, I am really hoping that for that that will be <laughs> the January will be the last meeting. Like I I hope um you know I am hoping that that search is moving quickly enough that there will be a hire before the end of January. So okay. thank you. Have a good sure. evening. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Um, I, I know it's been difficult, but thank you for the work that you're doing and thank you for being here and answering our very, at times, difficult questions. Mm -hmm. So very, very much appreciated. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. All right. So we probably need to do a time check, Allegra. And yes, see. it's 9.07. Um, so we have the police chief and Crest director search updates. We have review of budget letter. We have the multilingual parent advisory council. And then we have the debrief from forums. Um, hopefully the multi-parent, multilingual parent advisory council should be quick. Um, I don't know about the other things, <laughs> so. Um, well, I think um, I think if we could do like the police chief and crest director search update, I think that would be important. And then the the budget letter. By when do we need to get that in? It would be good to talk about that tonight if people have read it and have suggestions. Um, the multilingual parent advisory council is time sensitive, so but it's also it should be pretty quick. So can we do those those three? Because I think we can debrief um, the forums um, afterwards. If if anyone who has notes though on it, if they could please share that with us, with our committee, so yeah. that we can talk about that. Because obviously we want that, you know, still to be fresh in our minds. Um, but I think if we could, um, do folks have the bandwidth to kind of try to do those three pieces? So the police chief search one will be quick. Um, we met, um, I believe, last week, and we did not believe at the time we had sufficient applicants from the applicant pool. So we made a recommendation to post the job to wider networks. 
and we gave the town an opportunity to give them some time to um, advertise more, post it in different areas. Um, arguably, um, looking to get in um, a direct recruiter. And so the meeting was adjourned until in January. So that is where we are right now. We do have um, some interests, but the committee felt as a whole, we don't want to just make this decision. So we wanted broader applicant pool. We wanted more candidates. So that's uh, where we're going. Yeah, yeah quick question. Um, that's great to hear because that's definitely the, the right way to go in terms of um, adding you know, and reposting. So when you say, if you can provide more information in terms of like the rec recruiter, wider networks, because for me, obviously, I'm I'm interested whether a recruiter or posting at wider networks is actually going to get those that have innovative, uh, out of out of the box thinking, lived experience, um, you know, obviously diversity, uh, more diversity, and, and that sort of thing. And and for that to happen, that means either this recruiter or the networks that are being posted are places where obviously these candidates, um, you know, would be at because, you know, part of obviously my experience in terms of doing the work that I did um, and continue to do with the university for these many years is that the excuses that I hear all the time, which is, oh, we couldn't find them. They're not around. They're not, no, it's, they're there. It's just about making sure that you're actually outreaching, sharing and recruiting those candidates. So that's a very good point. And, and, that was what um, the committee decided as a whole. So there were a lot of um, people on the committee that are part of um, law enforcement groups. I mean, we're trying to find um, a chief executive in a police captain. So it is a specific job. So um, I think what the goal, the t what we said to the town was, okay, here are these additional police groups that um you you know may have chief executives in their pool like i don't want to say social network so to speak but you know police have their own fraternity so to speak and so it wasn't being advertised to all those fraternities or those additional fraternities so um we're looking we're not just looking in massachusetts so let's add that there we're moving beyond massachusetts and we're also saying post this job in these other groups some of them you know like women women police leadership um people of color police leadership things like that um extended not to say that they weren't doing those already but um there are some additional groups that were mentioned that the jobs were not posted in and in terms of a recruiter um we're saying expand it beyond your traditional indeed or career builder or those kind of job postings just um push where we think um, that will get um, more traction. And if that is still not working, maybe um, get a like a headhunter or something. That was part of the consideration is, have we talked to any headhunters who, you know, and that kind of narrative. So the talent took it back um, with the understanding that they are going to push it. And we gave them sufficient time because we won't be back until January to see, okay, did that expand our applications and do we do we gain more applications and if we think we have sufficient applications then we're going to meet and discuss how to go through and navigate those applications we've agreed to a process whereby there's a couple rounds of interviews um, but we won't start any until we think or feel that we have a sufficient pool to start with so if we come back in January, we think it's still too small. We're we're ready to say expand it a little bit more. Right. Yeah. Because it's 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 best to do it, you know, the right way. And it seems like you all are taking that time, which is good. Yes. To have a good, healthy, um, diverse pool of candidates to choose from, as opposed to trying to rush it, um, and then you know not not get what you know that that kind of healthy uh, diverse pool to choose from. And when we're talking about recruiting, and I'm glad you, to hear that it's it's going beyond Massachusetts because obviously there's a lot of areas that there are more diverse communities and diverse constituencies. And so, you know, 
the, the, the advertisement needs to go to those, you know, cities and towns and so on and so forth that have, you know, large populations of folks from other um, backgrounds and cultures and races and, and ethnicities and orientations and all of that, right? Um, so hopefully, um, you know, I'm, I'm heartened to hear, you know, your report so far. So um, until we meet again, um, we um, we decided holiday break, no one's gonna be doing much over the holidays. So I think we're back January 9th. So I think the meeting, whatever meeting we have after the 9th, I can make another update. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I can give a brief update about the Crest Director search and Jennifer, please feel free to jump in if you have anything to add. Um, we have had two meetings. The first was just to kind of go over the process. And then actually earlier today, we met to review candidate resumes um, and figure out who we would offer a first interview to. Um, so there were 19 applicants in the pool and we have extended interviews to about half of them and it's um I, I don't know what else I'm allowed to say or can say about it's I it's a good pool I'm excited about it <laughs> I don't know yeah and that's the question that I wanted to you know when I pose to to, to Pamela it's not like I want the details but is it a good healthy diverse pool that's basically it. You don't have to go into details. <laughs> I would say there are options that bring lots of different things to the table. Right. Um, so our hope is to schedule first interviews over the next coming weeks, understanding that it is the holiday season and getting 10 people together in one space at the same time can pose its challenges. Um, but... The timeline that was given to us by HR was hopefully to have a suggestion of the top three candidates to move on to the second round by the end of the first week of January. Does that sound right, Jennifer? Yeah. We'll see if that happens with people's schedules and scheduling interviews, but hopefully... So I guess like for the for the three finalists for the Crest director, um, what's going to be kind of the final rounds of interviews? Who's going to be in the final rounds of interviews um, in order to kind of get a sense of how these folks might end up doing? Like, so for instance, right before when the, the original director was um, hired, obviously there was no community responders or anything so will this person get to meet or these people get to meet with the community responders so that they provide feedback uh will they meet with other folks um who have you know other you know kind of um agencies that that this director would work with so that they provide feedback um possibly would these directors meet with us you know cssgc i don't know you know is there because this is a key position, given everything that just transpired with the first director. Um, and let's not forget that this person, hopefully, because that'll be my next thing, right? Once the director is hired, is hiring the assistant director, because we do not want what just happened to happen again. Um, so this person's going to hire an assistant director and hire more responders and build Crest, you know, hopefully the budget and so on and so forth. So how what what what's what's the game plan for for these three finalists let's say so my understanding is the finalists will interview with the town manager and then we'll have the opportunity to meet the team of responders and that's it <laughs> <laughs> and then and then you all based so you you all the search committee will be able to make a recommendation or how so we will recommend the finalists that will meet with Paul. So you recommend the finalists, but then you don't have any other kind of recommendation power after that? 
So let's say after the, so at the finalist meeting with the search committee, Paul and the responders, I guess I'm trying to see if there's like feedback, you know, other than I guess Paul's, Paul just being the ultimate, he'll be the one to make the decision, but if there's feedback also around those finalists so that it can inform Paul's decision-making. That is a good question and I don't have the answer to it, um, but I, I can clarify. Yes, if you can get more information on that because I think it, it's important. Other questions? Sorry, did I cut you off, Allegra? Oh, no. Not at all. Okay, I guess we can move on to the next thing. Um, I'm just going to do the Multilingual Parent Advisory Council quickly because that is a short Thing. Um, so one of the interpreters that was at the, in well, she was at both forums, but we spoke at the in-person forum more, um, is in charge of coordinating the multi-parent, multilingual parent advisory council. Is that correct? That's how you would describe her role, Jennifer? She coordinates that group for the schools? I would say she's pretty equivalent to the staff liaison, perhaps. Okay. Um, so the meeting of this group of parents who are affiliated with the schools and speak multiple languages is next Wednesday. And she has asked if we would present regarding Chris. Um, I would be available. It's at seven. Is that correct? Seven to eight is the time that's blocked off. I'm sorry, I keep on asking you questions and I can probably just find it in my email. But I believe it was seven to eight next Wednesday, the 20th. Oh, I should have put it in there. I'm sorry. I That's was okay. trying to find answers to Deborah's question originally, the email from Paul. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if anybody else is available or interested in joining that meeting with me. Deborah is unavailable. Um, and I can do it myself if nobody else is available. I understand it's the week before a break. <laughs> so, yeah, and just so folks know, I'm going to be traveling out of the country actually back to my home country um, as of the 23rd. So, yeah, it's going to be really busy for me that week. So, that's why I can't take this on. So, if anyone else um, can take it on, that would be great. Because usually, Allegra and I usually do like, co present and everything, which is very helpful. And the meeting is via Zoom, so via Zoom. that makes it easier for folks. And it's a great opportunity to work with a community that we are not necessarily connected with at the moment. So mm -hmm. I will try to attend as well, although I think I have another meeting on the 20th. I think the HRC meets. Did um, you say next Wednesday? Yes. Yes. You said from 7 to 8? Yes. Can we commit to a hard stop at eight? Yes. Okay. I don't even think you guys have to be there for the whole thing. I think yeah. it's like 10 to 20 minutes of like a overview of what the CSSJC and then the recommendations from CSWG just to inform the community and then some questions and answers and then that's it. You don't have to be there for the full meeting. Okay. Then you can put me down and send me the link. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Jennifer, would you be able to connect us with Elisa via email? Yeah, I can. She sent me the link. Do you, right. do you have the yes. link? Um, I might, but if you want to just send it to us again that way, it'll pop back up into my understanding. All right. So that's done. Review of the budget letter. Did that, did anybody read it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, do we want to, can we screen share? Can I screen share? I can screen share, but I have to find it first. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's one of those situations where we've been on for a while. I think it was a meeting packet. Meeting packet. Thank you. Um, do you want me to screen share? I have the packet. If up. you have it up then. 
Yeah. Can you all see the packet? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not going to read it out loud because we're all grown ups, but um, did anybody have any glaring concerns or any additions or subtractions they would want to make? I only had a question. Yes. Um, is the intent to attach the numbers to the letter before sending it? I think so. My only caveat would I would want to put in like a footnote or something saying this was based on the FY, I think it was FY 2021 at this point, um, unions or non-union salary scale. Um, so to just say like we would expect that whatever is funded at um current levels which i couldn't find I, I so yeah these are so if you need those they should be online if they're not just let me know and i can get them for you because they oh. are for, open to the public i just wasn't sure since the responders we now know are in the union that is dispatch i just wasn't sure where they actually now fit in in the real time list because I was looking at like the SEIU numbers because I think that's the union that represents them I just couldn't figure out what they would like would they fall under dispatch or would they fall under something else in that um, and and my other question um was when, when the proposals were made with those numbers was there um was it figured out that it was within the budget like the town's budget could absorb those numbers or at any point did the town ever incorporate these numbers in their budget so i think that obviously it's not very comparable to what was proposed because there are so many other layers of employee that are in there. Um, I mean, I think that the answer has been no, we don't have that in the budget. And I think there was concern about funding things via grant versus via town operating budget. Um, Yeah, and to kind of add to that, um, it this was to it was a, a budget that was proposed, you know, through CSWG through the work that we had done in the research, um, to really fully staff, um, Crest and to in thinking about it as a a twenty four seven, um, agency, right, independent department, um, and so you know when when. Folks are throwing around fully staffed, thinking that these eight responders and one director is fully staffed. That is not. That is severely understaffed, in terms of the ultimate goal um, for for Cress um, and some of these other um, departments that was recommended in CSWG. So I think that that's the thing. It's just kind of like if we don't provide some type of budget and we just provide a statement saying, okay, this is what we need. You know, even if you know even if there's resistance as there will always be, right, from the town and saying they don't have the money, we still need to provide the budget in terms of, okay, this is what we think would actually meet the needs of what these departments would, you know, could function a lot better as opposed to being severely understaffed as they are right now. Um, because a lot of times we do provide statements, but then there's always that question, the budget, the budget, the budget. And that goes to the heart of my question, when the recommendations were made, was there any pushback to say that this money was not in the budget or was there a conversation that says, this is something that the town may could potentially come up with in the budget? Well, our contention is yes, the town could come up with it in the budget, but their contention was that no, they couldn't come up with it in the budget uh, because they weren't sure in terms of the calls that the police were responding to and what Crest would respond to, for instance, Crest as an example. Um, so until they knew what was the tried and true, then, then that's when they would up the budget, you know, 
so on and so forth. So the, the usual types of, of, of counters. So that's why they landed on just the budget that they landed on, like let's say for Crest, and they didn't land on any budget, right? For the youth empowerment, DI, two positions, um, you know, and haven't moved on pretty much anything else. I think too that part of the conversation that hasn't happened as much is the idea of if Cress is operational in the sense that it was conceived to be an alternative to policing and there are some ways in which the police force is reduced, then can that money be reallocated to Cress? And that was something that I think that is something that I think there will be resistance to. Um, so, but I, I do think that that would be one way of providing funding for the department. Mm -hmm. If and when the data shows that calls to police are reduced and be, that's because Cress is responding to these things instead. And there were other like pockets of money. I think there was like, I don't know if it was marijuana money. There was like all these other kind of pockets of money that we had brought up um, during that time, which again was just dismissed. Um, besides the budget, though, uh, Allegra, I just feel like we could, if we could add a little bit more around the resident oversight board um, area, just in terms of besides the stipends, just again, mm -hmm. for, for them, you know, just to say that the need in terms of them being independent. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know if we added anything in terms of um, the youth empowerment um, and the fact that there's, you know, still no budget for them. There's still no home or, or center uh, for them. And then we did talk about multicultural center, right? Yep. So, yep. But those would be my two kind of thoughts too just to kind of add a little bit more. Yeah. And Allegra, all of the contracts are um, available online. Okay. Under the human resources department. And then I think it says like labor and wages or something similar to that. So would there be a way to figure out where Cress actually falls, like which line and step and everything that they actually are? Oh, I just had it up. They have their own they have they, their own line they're on they, their own line okay so it says community responders it says community responders i think they're an f1 and then the next level is f2 okay okay perfect sorry i i was not able to find that on my own so thank you for that um lisette hi um just a question for the second regarding programs recommended by the CSWG requiring fiscal support, um, are we leaving it like that or are we adding like what the actual additional programs are? So I think there was a formatting issue, but that would be, that would be like the following being youth empowerment, multicultural and resident oversight board. So it would be the next three paragraphs of that. Oh, okay. I think Got it. I can make that not be a big space. Allegra, I'm going to send you the link to get to the page. Perfect. Any other feedback? So the, the fiscal year ends on June 30th. Is yes. the intention here trying to get all these things into the budget for the next fiscal year? Yes. Okay. And so the the forum for public input already took place, and this is the time during which the town manager is usually like meeting with different department heads, asking for their budget requests, and so it seemed like a good time for us to try and get something before him on behalf of the recommendations. So I think May 
first is when the budget is due and then it, there's a presentation mid-May and then by mid-June, I think the town council has to vote on the approval of it. So given that um, press doesn't have a director who would be technically the department head, um, could we state in the letter that, you know, as the CSS JC, um, understand that Crest does not have a department head and to be um, in line with the mandate as proposed by CSWG. And we think that this budget represents the original mandate as envisioned by CSWJC for CRESS, mm -hmm. um, for it to be fully operational, um, it warranted to be fully funded at these levels. And here are the projected numbers. Of course, it's two or three years later, so it does not include inflation um, or anything like that. But at least, you know, just point out that in absence of a director, we want to bring it to the town's attention that Cress is in need of funding and per the initial recommendation, these are the levels that are recommended. And we highly suggest and recommend that Cress be funded at these levels. I think that makes sense. Uh, Freke? I just wanted to know how we arrived at the figure for the civilian, the stipend for the civilian oversight commission. Yeah, it's actually supposed to be the resident oversight board, right? Um, yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't remember. There's a there's a document that kind of uh, describes um the amount, and I think it might have been based on you know what the like town council makes and and other um committees that that you know will need to that meets and does that type of work. Because remember, we wanted to have people a lot of times, especially in terms of being inclusive and diverse and getting people from, you know, all economic backgrounds too. We want to make sure that they're able to, right, take the time to be able to do this type of work. And usually not having a stipend is very prohibitive um, towards them being able to do that, right? To like buy food because a lot of times, you know, th this board might be meeting at different times, weekends, so on and so forth, right? If they need to hire a babysitter or something for the kids or, or things like that, that we, we, uh, make it so that they're able to do that. Um, so from my recollection, that's why we ended up being uh, at that figure. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of times people who who serve on these boards, um, obviously now we're, we're starting to have other folks on, which is great from other backgrounds and, and diversities, but, but for a long time, it was only people who actually come from a certain income level. Any other feedback? Because we're, it's getting late and <laughs> I know I need to I have a child that I need to attend to. <laughs> So what I can do is I can do the one more, like one, incorporate the suggestions, one draft that goes out to Jennifer or goes out through Jennifer and everyone responds directly to that. I feel like I haven't done this in a while. Um, like people can just respond directly to you or to you and Jennifer, however you want to kind of indicate for us to do it, not to, to yeah, um, as long as it's not reply all. Yeah. <laughs> just um, it to you and, and Jennifer and then just the deadline by when. But you, so people have, I mean, the thing that you guys need to figure out other than the suggestions you just made now, 
needs to be finalized because you can't make decision making over a document, even if it's one on one via email. Right. So I so will. If there's other stuff, you should. Yeah. Is if there's nothing else, I will take a suggest. I will take the suggestions that Everald, Lissette, and Deborah gave to me. I will fluff those out, and then I will also look at the budget that was initially put, and I will make the best adjustments that I am able based on my ability and math skills to make it look like what it should look like in 2024 dollars. Does that make sense? Yes. Um, and then I will send that out all together. Mm -hmm. And people can respond only to me. Yes, this looks good. Or no, let's table it until January. Wait, but uh, Jennifer, what do you mean? Why can't we just provide feedback on, on, we can't provide any edits on it? We used to do that at CSWG. If we just responded to. Well, you guys used to send me the document and I would made edits. Okay, so then how can we do that? So then that's that. Then then that's what you would need to do is you would okay. need to send me the changes in the edits. Okay. Um, but you guys can't do it as a group because then you're making decisions without being in a public setting, like without being in a public you know, meeting. Yeah, but that's what we wanted to know is just how can we move this along but provide edits because we want to make sure that people can provide edits after Allegra's next rendition of it. So then what you what so that we're in terms of follow the public meeting laws. So we just send the edits back to you. Yes. And then so individually, not as a group. Yeah. Right? And then and then you incorporate the edits and then what? And then you send it to Allegra. And then I send it back out. But then like you guys, so the problem is you can't like vote and say, this is the way that we want it until you're in your next meeting. Wait, you <laughs> said send it to Allegra and then what? Cause it, you- I didn't say send it to Allegra. Um, you, what I'm trying to say is that you guys can't make a decision on how to, to find, you can't finalize the document outside of the meeting. Because we need to vote on it, is what she said. Because you need to vote on it. Why do we need to vote on it? Because none of you individually have the power to be to speak on behalf of the group. You all have to do it together. And the things that you guys do together are done in a public meeting. I get that. But if we if we are saying that we already talked about this, we already discussed it, she's going to do another rendition. All we're doing is providing edits. We provide the edits to you. If we're in agreement that we're OK with the edits and for her to follow through, why do we have to talk about it yet again? So what I would suggest that you do to avoid any of it is vote on it now and say pending I mean, you can't even do that if you haven't seen her revisions. Like that was the part of like we. I think you guys were hoping to get through this now or in person or like during the meeting now, so that you didn't have to worry about it. But you have to vote on sending the and having the letter itself sent out to town council. You can't vote on the letter unless you do something like. If you give Allegra specific, if you give her specific recommendations for it, and then you guys vote now, say based on the specific recommendations, then that would be fine. But you can't just vote after she makes some changes, yes or no. Like, I don't know, did that make sense? So, yes. So if, for example, a motion was made that we will vote to send this letter to town council once the paragraph beginning with second becomes joined with the following paragraph, the paragraph that begins with the resident oversight board you can just say what the edits discussed now. Like, I don't even know if you okay. have to go through all those details. All right, but... all right. All right. Just, just this. So do we want to vote or do we want to? No, just send, because we're going to still, we have to give folks time, time to do the edits. So we'll just have to do it the next meeting. That's fine. Okay. So, okay. Whatever. It's ridiculous, but, you know, got to follow these, you know, 
tedious right. situation. So, so everybody um, send their edits to Jennifer. Is that yes? Okay. And then, and then, and then you kind of get the edits together, send it to Allegra, and then Allegra, you have a final kind of copy for us to look at in the January meeting. Sounds good. Put it in the packet for the meeting. Yes. All right. So we are tabling F of debrief for for from forums for next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, we have public comment. Um, if anybody would like to make a public comment, this is your last chance to do so in this meeting. Please raise your hand. Um, oh, all right. We have three hands raised. Um, starting with Laura. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, this is Lauren Mills. Um, I'm a resident of Amherst and I'm also a community member of the Board of Health. And I'm just um, speaking on my own behalf, um, but I hope that the Board of Health will um, take up some of the things, some of the issues that you guys are working on. Um, I had a few comments um, from your meeting tonight. Um, one is the um, conversation around Crest, um, Crest Permanent Space. Is the Bang Center where Crest is now located going to be, are they going to move from that space? Because I thought it was actually, um, you know, put, put together, it was actually made for for crest so that's a little um surprises to me that that's not going to be that's not going to continue to be their permanent space um i also think that um uh miss young is doing a really good job so i just really would like to publicly publicly um encourage her and just hope that we all you know can remain a little humble because we all need to um collaborate and work together if we want to see changes. Um, I, and I also think that, um, you know, uh, we have to remember that recommendations are not demands. Um, so, and it kind of feels, I, I definitely feel the friction in the town as far as pushback from the town council, but I also feel that we as community members and those representing the community have to be more specific and more detailed in um, the vision that we're putting forward. I'll just lastly say, um, it's always been in my mind, like, is the youth empowerment, is it programming? Is it, could it be in the cultural center that we also want to see? Like, I feel that there is not enough detail in, in the, the things that we want to put forward as a community. And um, I would just hope that we all just remain a little humble and, and continue to keep the pressure, but remember that we all have a part and a role um, to play in making these changes for the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Um, do, do. Hi everyone, can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. I wanna one, thank you all for your time and energy. I realize it's almost 10 o'clock, so I'll be brief. Um, I wanna direct you all's energy towards Cress. Um, the presentation tonight was really alarming and I'm glad that you all brought up such critical points and asked critical questions. I understand that Rome was not built in a day, but I hope that Cress does not lose its mission rooted in anti-racism and really the way the community envisioned it. It honestly pains me as a former CSWG member to hear more surveying and more for forums because I feel like the community is tired of repeating the same stories and repeating the same narratives um, for change. So I hope that you all can continue to push for Crest to be implemented and to execute how it was envisioned originally. Thank you. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you, Brianna.
Hi, Miss Pat. Oh, okay. Miss Pat. Did I lose you guys? Nope, you're there. I can't. Okay. Okay. Good evening. I know it's a long night. I won't speak too long. I have so much um emotion going on as I was listening. First of all, I'm gonna thank uh, Miss Young, um the fire chief, and all of you tonight for your time. I will say that I'm not surprised about what is happening. I knew this a few years ago when I served on CSWG. I knew that <clears throat> grass will be set up to fail because we're talking about white supremacy in our town. Grass is not a priority for our town government, meaning our town manager, some of the town councilors, the finance committee, and the police union. The power holders in this town are threatened by the fact that Crest will benefit marginalized population in our town. That's the underlying issue. The second issue is any type of government is very inefficient, whether it's local government, state government, or federal. CSWG did all the research that needed to be done. Here we are, several years, another research has been done on uh, resident oversight board on you know, training and training, endless training um, on <clears throat> the responders. This is all waste of tax dollars money. Like Deborah, you know, rightly pointed out, where is all this co money coming from when finance committee refused to fully recommend uh, fully funding press, for example? All of a sudden, we have money to waste when 7 Gen already did that. We have LEAP, did the same work. And I decided to leave CSSJC, but will continue to support the work just for my own mental health. Like I needed a break. This is set up to frustrate so, you know, folks who are brave enough, like you guys and other some community members who want this to work. It's, we're going to be discussing same thing many years to come. What frustrates me is that our town government are using BIPOC and marginalized population in our town to travel all over the country for something that is not benefiting the population they're claiming to do. They're going and talking about Crest, and yet the services are mostly social services instead of public safety that you all had you know, discussed tonight. I want to quickly mention that Laurie, thank you. She um, has sent me um, the December 7th um, finance committee meeting where they're supposed to recommend um, guidelines for town council. And when it came to CRES program, we have Lynn Presma saying that, you know, that for anything to happen, that the CRES program needs to be evaluated. But I've never heard anybody in this town say, we want to evaluate the police, for example. The implication of that is that perhaps they don't want to fully fund CRES 24 seven. And that really disturbed me a lot. And the last thing I wanted to say is that when we talk about collaboration in our town, 
to me, what I've observed is that the power holders want to push stuff into our throat. And if we don't follow what they tell us, then we're not collaborating. So I think we need to rethink what collaboration means in this town. Who is pushing collaboration? Because what is happening with CS, CS, SJC is that your committee is not being respected by the town manager, by Lane, by the finance committee, by the police union. They're the people who are not collaborating with you guys. And yet they use that word all the time, collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. I just, I just want that to sink in to people so that when people start talking about collaboration, who, who is pushing it, who, who is pushing it and to whose benefit it is. And I refuse to be Tom, uh, Uncle Tom, I'm sorry. I will not be one of those. I will just stop there because I, you know, I don't want to repeat what most people have said. In terms of Banks Community Center, this crap about it's not open 24-7. Uh, uh, Why can't we push to have Banks Community Center be open 24-7 so that Chris can be in there? Who made the rule to close the building at 4 p.m.? We need to push, we need to push and advocate that less Banks Community Center be 24-7. And the very last thing, and I will shut up, is when I heard um the fire the um fire chief stating that. He knows the best. To me, with the CSWG that worked on recommendation, we have professor in that group. We have successful business owners. We have people in law background. We have school administrators, people who have worked in nonprofit. And to disrespect that, our recommendation doesn't, doesn't have to be what to be followed. It's like insulting. CSWG. And I'm hearing that also with CSSJC. You all come with very strong background. So who gets to define expertise? Who gets who get to define smartness? I feel everybody is smart in their own rights. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Thank you, Ms. Pat. Um, so our next meeting is going to be in January. Um, I will look at the exact date. It is January 10th. 10th. Um, I had invited Chief Ting to come speak with us. He has graciously declined that offer, but did send me this afternoon some information about um the co-responder program um some of the i think policies from them and their log over the last year as well as some information about some of the stuff they're doing in schools so that was supposed to be on our agenda um it seems like the crest and dei and youth empowerment updates are taking a long time so i might suggest we keep that and debriefing as our main agenda items and if things come up between now and then to email me and we can add them on um unless any anyone else has anything pressing at this time and i will um get the information that was sent to me by chief ting over to jennifer so it can be in the next packet And it's 9.59 and we can adjourn. <laughs> Unless anyone wants to stay on. Any takers? No. 
Okay. I just have a, sorry, one quick oh, question. Yes. Um, sorry, Allegra. No, that's so, okay. The legal woman voters, you said that's January 18th. Where's that taking place? So that is also by Zoom. Okay. Yeah. And I will send the promotional materials to Jennifer as well. Okay. Um, and to you and Miss Moist, then I will try my best to be in attendance on the Wednesday, the 20th. Oh, great. Um, mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So now it is 10 p.m. And, and okay, that was not a hand raise. That was a goodbye, Deborah. Okay. <laughs> we are adjourned. <laughs> goodbye. Goodbye, everyone.